descent. He and his brother were fighting for the Romanian national team at a lot of the bigger amateur tournaments around the world. Over here, over here, over here. Training in Florida. Keep your mouthpiece in your mouth, okay? Jeff Florence is a trainer for the Tudor brothers now. In your pro debut, you're 18 years old. Did not go to traditional high school. He was homeschooled because he and his brother were going to so many tournaments. So boxing is all he does living in Fort Lauderdale. He's looking good right now. He's keeping his range, using his height, his reach. You know, not letting Gonzalez get on the inside and not falling for those looping shots. So, so far, very good for Sasha Tudor so far in this fight, in this first round. Main event tonight, Joseph Diaz Jr. Ricky Perez. Let him out, let him out. Watch, Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Stop! Don't punch. Step back. Step back. Box. Coming up next is going to be Joshua Garcia and Eric Lozada. Good posture by Tudor. I, I, I like his technique. I like, uh, you know, the way he's keeping... He's keeping his, his focus really on Gonzalez, but not really falling for, for those looping shots. Gonzalez has bad balance. Tudor can catch him with a counter coming in, but it's just the first round. Like that? Nice right hand right there. That's exactly what you want to do against the southpaw. Work out of it, guys. Work out of it. Deep Work right out of it. Let him go. Let him go. You know, aim at the chest as well. But calm, real calm and cool is Tudor so far. I like seeing that from, from young kids, you know, 18 year old kids making the pro debut. And I know seconds of the opening round. Good one. The <laughs> most fight night started off in 2014. Stop, don't fight. He's hitting you with the one two. You gotta keep working up top. Look for the, 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 the shots of the okay. Go upstairs, downstairs. You hold on that mouthpiece, okay? Hold on that mouthpiece. Don't let your mouthpiece fall off again. Shoot your stuff straight down the pipe and then roll out, all right? Come on, man. Straight down, three, two. All right? Look, not a three, two, but it's... Let's go, let's go! Box! Second round of action. This was scheduled for four. Our opener, the middleweight division, Sasha Tudor. When you make your pro debut, Sergio, it's uh, always nerve-wracking. But this kid, we were talking in the back, is calm. And you like his calmness, huh? Oh, well, you know, he sees his brother being a professional. He, he's been able to handle the lights, you know, so it's a chip off the old block. But, yeah, I really like how calm and cool he is. You know, he, he's not shook. He's in there with a really tough Mexican. He just got hit with a hard overhand left right there. But, I, I mean, I, I like his composure so far. Sasha's corner, giving some advice. Brandy Floor is a reporter for tonight. What are they saying, Brandy? Well, before the fight, I actually spoke with Sasha and asked him about making his pro debut on DAZN. He said he was really excited. He waited a long time to go pro. He was even a little jittery, shaking around, just really ready to get after. He says he's excited to show everybody and on DAZN, on TV, what he's made of. Again, he gets the opportunity because Nino Sandoval's fight fell off, so take advantage. He wasn't scheduled to be on DAZN, but here he is now. Yeah, in his corner, uh, his trainer Jeff Ford has wanted him to throw a 3-2. I love hearing that. No, normally, everyone knows what a 1-2 is. A 3-2 is, you know, go around the guard with a hook instead of a jab, especially against the southpaw. Come right right down the pipe with that straight right hand. So it's, it's good advice if you're fighting a southpaw, leading with that hook. It doesn't look Watch like you're thinking it's Watch your hands. No, he doesn't. Like I said, I mean, he, he looks like he's he's an eight-round fighter, you know, with at least ten rounds. Uh, ten Work fights out of guys. Work out. Hands are free. Hands are free. He's Work keeping out his composure. It. You know, he's not he's not overreacting to everything that Gonzalez does when he bum rushes him. You know, he's, he's really uh, he's really good in there. I like I like what I'm seeing. You know, the international competition is obviously going to help you. Yeah, but you know what? Once the headgear comes off and those smaller glo gloves and the lights are brighter, you know, when I'm 
see shots like that that Gonzalez just landed, they hurt, you know, two or three That's times afraid, more than the amateur gloves. So he's taking them well, and I still like the way he's reacting going to the middle of the ring. Gonzalez lost in his last fight in October. He's been uh, fighting the Southern California club scene around here. He's two and two. Yeah, and that was just four months ago, so Gonzalez is right back, and, you know, that was a fight where he got, he lost the majority decision. You know, so this, like I said, credit to Sasha Tudor for taking this fight against the top Southpaw Mexican that just had a, a majority decision lost four months ago. Lands that left, does Gonzalez. Tudor has his back against the ropes, connected with a one-two. You can see Gonzalez has heavy hands, you know, it's... it's he only has four fights, and, you know, he doesn't have a knockout ratio in those two fights, but he, you can see that he's a hard, strong puncher. You can hear the shots thudding once they, they glance off the biceps and the shoulders. Especially right here, ringside, final seconds of the second round. What the more fight now? Yeah, he's starting to heat up on the Thursday night. Like Tudor that, gets one in. I like that right hand by Tudor to the body. That's going to set up big shots upstairs. That's good, that's good. You got to throw the right hand again. Bro, I, need, I need three three punches. Three punches. And here's that left hand, Ben. So look at this punch right there. Boom. Beautiful shot. It looked like he was going to come over the top. He came under with somewhat of a 45 degree sloppy uppercut, but sloppy work. So that caught the attention of Sasha Tudor. Tudor doesn't want to get hit with shots like that by a strong puncher in Gonzalez. Hey, watch your cabeza, okay? Watch your head. Check it out. Let's go. My piece, my piece. Fuck. Third round of action. And we'll see as Gonzalez lives in Mexico. He's 28. He turned pro later, he said, because he got sick a couple years ago. Had some stomach issues that sidelined him. And then before, before that, the pandemic. But he grew up in the L.A. gyms, specifically a gym where Sergio Moro was at. He said he was about 10 years old watching you train. I'm sorry to say I don't remember him. But he was 10, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I, I got to meet him in the back, and... You know, he remembers clearly, uh, you know, the, the pal gym that we that we trained in, that we fought in, and, and, and remember the names of the sparring partners there. So, you know, I'm glad that he's here. I'm glad that he's getting this opportunity. So that tells you that he really came up the tough way, because those gyms where you were at, you have earned your way, no matter how old you were. Oh, no, listen, I'm on about just a block away from East L.A., so you got some of the best sparring, you know, all around these areas. So, yeah, he, he, he gave good work and got good work. Uh, junior high is when the family moved back to Mexico, but professional here in the United States. He was very confident, too. Stop, stop. Let him go. Well, let him go. Step out. Step out. Step back. Great shape. And like I said, he just Fox. fought four months ago, and he, he just barely came up with a, with a loss against a, a pretty decent fighter. So, yeah, against a prospect that's making his full debut, your confidence should be through the roof. Yeah, he went the distance, lost against a fighter who was 6-1. and one. I like that left hand to the chest of Gonzalez. He's not aiming at the, the, the chin or the head anymore. Aiming at the chest of the taller tutor. That's a good game plan. As we're landing there are power punches. I think that's Gonzalez's MO is trying to land something heavy. No, no, that's exactly what his MO is because he doesn't have, you know, the speed of the technique to compete with Tudor. You know, he's having to punch up. So if he can punch at the chest and just keep digging to the body. Yeah, he's going to get the attention of Tudor. This isn't a soft touch for Tudor. Don't get your right, point of view. No, no, let go, let you go, get a guy who is there. Fuck. This isn't it. That though, I said that. I, I keep repeating that, and I give a lot of credit for Tudor taking this fight. Pro debut, you want a soft touch. This is not a soft touch with Josiah Gonzalez tonight. The father of Tudor, so because let of his amateur background, they want to test him. Work out of it. Stop. Don't punch. Step back. They did that with their son, Eric Tudor, in his last fight. Fight that he lost. He's trying to get back on the winning side. Yeah, you said it. A fight that he lost. You know, you don't want to lose. Let you know, him go. Let him go. Let him go. Five, ten fights. You want Come to keep on, that unblemished record. But when you're you go. getting matched up tough like that, that's only going to make you a better fighter. Even with that one blemish on your career that his brother took. Right hand from Tudor. Yeah. See that punches. That's nice. Watch Those are the punches that I want to see. Don't don't mix it up with twos and threes against a fighter. Just two shots like that. A lead right. 
sweep him with the left hook. Hurt the combination against the left hander. Let him go, let him but go. But stay off the ropes. You gotta pivot out the ropes. Oh. This is Gonzalez's fight right there. Make it dirty, make it ugly, make it rough. And Andy Hernandez is gonna warn him. And he don't play the referee tonight. He's gonna warn both of us. Hey, get him there. Get him there. I need combination just like that. I don't like that you're dropping your hands. Look, you gotta pick your hands up. You're too stiff. All you gotta do is shoot the shit straight. Every time you hit him, you hurt him. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're touching him over the chair, okay? You, you gotta let him go this round. Okay? All right. Start off, start off with those jabs and then start shooting straight right through it. Then fucking start putting more right hands behind it. Double it up. And this is the thing about these four rounders, Beth. I'm telling you, even if you can be, you know, ahead. Ooh, late shot right there. That was borderline. I, I think it was like a, he was throwing it. It wasn't and a cheap shot. I think that was a borderline shot. He got the warning. Good job by the referee. And good job by Gonzalez sneaking that in. Never works, man. Fourth and final round. Oh, the boy fight night opening up at the ring along with Sergio Mora. Our main event tonight, Jojo Diaz. But it's heating up with Sasha Tudor in red. And Josias Gonzalez, the southpaw. Yeah, see, Gonzalez has the right game plan, you know, get Tudor against the ropes and just wail away. You get, you gotta just, good body shot there by Gonzalez. Just punch at anything that Tudor's giving you. You know, it's a four-round fight. The judges are gonna count the aggression. The shot there by Gonzalez over the top. I don't like the fact that Tudor's mixing it up with Gonzalez. It's making, yeah. making it easier for Gonzalez to land something. He should be boxing, right? It should be bo power go, boxing. Sasha. You know, you Let have the size, the, the range, the strength. Stick behind that jab. Lead right hands. Just like that, see? But he's on the ropes, like you said in the third round. Don't do that. Go. That's the one thing the tall fighters, you know, you, they got to make, make themselves smaller. Stop, bend those, bend bend those knees. You know, you got to practice guys. that in the gym. You know, sometimes your height can be a disadvantage. When you're fighting strong, shorter fighters that are accustomed to fighting tall fighters. You see, this Gonzalez is tough. Man. Eric Tudor's tough also. I mean, Sasha Tudor's also tough. But you see the 18-year-old taking a deep breath in his pro debut. And you can spar all you want, but until you actually get in that first fight, you get a grown man at the age of 28, and Gonzalez, it doesn't respect you when asked him. He doesn't anything about your opponent. He's like, no, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Let go, let go. It step doesn't back, matter. Back. Once you're in that ring, you're looking at an 18-year-old kid. You know, so yeah, you treat him like a kid and rough him up. That's what Gonzalez is doing. But you got to give credit to Sasha Tudor. He's keeping let him his go, composure. Let him go. Stop, you know, stop. And, and, go and his calmness under pressure. Go ahead, butt. Watch your heads, guys. Clash your heads. Cut. Oh, and Gonzalez head, is cut. Accidental headbutt. Well, lucky for Gonzalez, it's a four-round okay? fight. Last, last round, right, and uh, but, you know, you expect that against the left hand and the right hand often. Gonzalez cut on the right eyebrow. Right hand landed by Tudor. That lead right Stop. hand from Tudor's gonna land it. Yeah, that was a looping shot, but the reason it landed because Tudor actually Fox. bent his knees and looked like he was gonna go down to the body and he looped it over the top. Now piece gets moved. Gonzalez on a good check hook. Tudor getting over aggressive right there. Gonzalez and Tudor back and forth. Gonzalez should just be aiming at the body right now. Tudor's he's head on the head hunting a little bit too much. You have the strength. Go. You're on the inside. You broke the range. Just dig down to the body. Stop. See, Tudor's Stop. not liking that. He's already, Hi. you know, holding on. Over here, over here. Over the here. technique's going out right there because he's getting fatigued. And he doesn't yeah. want him to uh, fight so, a slug. Uh, one more time. That's a point. You got with it. Gonzalez. Yeah. The mouthpiece was out. They put Come it back in. in for Gonzalez. Final moments of the fight. Ten seconds to go. Tudor Gonzalez. Good body shot by Gonzalez right now. You can tell that Tudor didn't like that. Four round done. That's a good one. Respect between the two fighters. Ooh, kind of wish it was six or eight. That would have been a fun one. I don't think Tudor wanted another two rounds. No, no, no. Rounds. I'm talking about for myself. <laughs> selfishly. No, man, listen. Uh, we're going to say it one more time, Bethel. This was a tough yeah. outing for a pro debut in Sasha Tudor. To take in a fighter with, you know, with four fights, rugged southpaw, I mean, yeah, credit to him and his team for having the confidence, but, you know, yeah. It was a tough education in a four-round fight right now.
Interesting to see what the judges have to say about this one. Coming up next is going to be Joshua Garcia, Eric Lozada, working our way towards Jojo Diaz and Jesus Ricky Perez in the main event. If you're watching, wherever you may be, on the Golden Boy YouTube page, or live on The Zone, if you subscribe to The Zone, get all kinds of great coverage. Her Sergio on a lot of the cards with Todd Grisham or Corey Erdman, our good friends. Look at the highlights for this one, Serge. Yeah, man, and listen, both these guys had highlights because, look, the polished boxer, we know that was Sasha Tudor. He had the, the, uh, the amateur pedigree, and look, bouncing off the ropes, taking a pivot, you know, turning around the aggressive Gonzalez, keeping the fight in the middle of the ring. This one, he was looking sharp, but then he let Gonzalez head, fight head. his fight, the rugged fight, and making it sloppy and dirty, punching in between the shots, not letting Tudor fight his fight at range. And even, you know, taking shots like that hey, on the break. I love yeah, seeing this from rugged fighters. Josiah Gonzalez came to beat Sasha Tudor tonight and, and ruined the plans of the pro debut. And you can tell that Tudor didn't like it. At the end of it, you know, he was glad this fight was over. Joe Martinez, a ring announcer, he has the decision. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and here are the totals. Tiffany Clinton scores it 39-37 for Gonzalez. Dr. Lou Moret, 39-37 for Tudor. And Judge Zach Young scores this bout 38-38 for a split draw. There you go, Beto Duran. Yep. This is the reason matchmaking is a science, matchmaking is an art. You you got to give a lot of credit to Tudor, but there you go. You have his first blemish on his record. Pro debut, not a win, not a loss. He has to leave with a draw. All for fighting a tough Mexican southpaw in Josiah Gonzalez. Yeah, his uh, Tudor's team said, we'll take it. Have no problem. We're very confident in him. Split draw. 39-37. You know I can see it. Both ways. I can see the draw. I'm glad the judges saw that too. That was a tough fight. Tough uh, outing. Credit credit to Gonzalez. Would love to see him again against another uh, prospect. But I do like what I see from 18-year-old Sasha Tudor. No, look. It, it's not his his problem that he got a, a draw. He fights who they put in front of him. So credit for him. And he's going to have a bright future. I like what I saw. This was all matchmaking right here. They shouldn't have fought a, a tough southpaw on his first pro debut. They should have let him get his confidence against someone he's supposed to beat and maybe not a southpaw that strong. Well, again, Tudor not signed by Golden Boy. So it's his team, his dad, his trainer deciding that's who we want to take on. He's on the card because his brother Eric is signed by them. So it, 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 the entire team said, hey, they were very confident. When you're at 18 year old and you fought all over the world you're very confident in his ability maybe they overlook we'll see as gonzalez who was two and two he's just hey whatever it was it was a fun fight for us let's look at the cop walks a final punch stance for this one the power punches you know gonzalez had one game plan he was just gonna throw bombs from the get-go that's what he was gonna do and hey, listen he threw 147 punches it's just the accuracy was on tudor's part yeah tudor did look like the more polished boxer yeah. the first two rounds were definitely you know, two rounds, but the last two rounds, well, Gonzalez made it sloppy, made it rugged, and fought his fight, and uh, that's the reason we got a draw in this first bout. All right, so the first fight is done. Four more to go. Still to come, the main event. Jojo Diaz comes back to the ring against Jesus and Ricky Pettis from Tijuana.
Zone Worldwide May 18th. The fight of the century. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division. But Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crowd. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire, live on The Zone Worldwide, May 18th. Two MMA empires will meet in Riyadh to battle for one throne. History will be made. I want all the best. I'm not playing around. When champions from the PFL step into the arena to battle champions from Bellator. For the first time ever, reigning champions will all fight. Oh February 24th, live from Saudi Arabia. Seize the throne. Sergio Mora grew up, and not too far where we're at, the Commerce Casino in Southern California. Golden Boy Fight Night, thank you for joining us. Our second bout coming your way. Youngsters, this should be a good one. Yeah, technically two undefeated fighters, you know, uh, in a four-round fight like we saw in our last, uh, in our opening bout. Anything could happen. we got to draw. These four-round fights can be dangerous, but both these guys have never lost, so someone's all got to go. Oh, somebody's always got to go. I wonder if Joe Martinez will say that. What's up, Joe? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go on the next one tonight. Four rounds this scheduled in the lightweight division. The three judges scoring at ringside are Jerry Cantu, Tiffany Clinton, and Zachary Young. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Gerard White. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black, trimmed in white, he weighed it officially 130 and three quarter pounds. In two professional fights, he is unbeaten with one win. No defeats. One draw from Los Angeles, California. Here is Eric Losada. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing teal and gold. He weighed it officially 131 and one quarter pounds. In six bounds as a young professional, he stands perfect in the ring. Six victories, no defeats, three wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the heavy-handed lightweight, the undefeated native of Moreno Valley, California, Joshua Go! Joshua Eric, who went over the rules in the dressing room. Both of you guys know what I expect out of you. The trunks are just a little bit right here, a little high here. I'm gonna let them work the hair, they look good over here. Let's go to work, guys. Gerard White, the third man in the ring, get ready to go for young Joshua Garcia. You see him with his new trainer, Eddie Gonzalez. You okay, Raul? He's a trained former world champion, Danny Romano. Joshua. You got a mouthpiece. Well, step on in the Eric Lozada. Who's 20 years old from Mexico City now training in Southern California with Panda Martinez? So, this is two young fighters with excellent veteran corners. 
Panda Martinez who used to do my, uh, my hand wraps. Excellent challenge. Old school, does it right? So Joshua Garcia, this is his first fight since 2022. So last year he had a couple fights, they fell off, had some injuries, just nagging injuries. So there was no need to rush anything. So now he's fresh. First fight with Eddie Gonzalez from Moreno Valley, trains in Southern California. So it gets good work, and Eddie takes him to train at Fundamentals Gym. That's where Don Chewy's at, who does a great job, just old school trainer and a cut man extraordinaire. And they'll go to Maywood. So, you know, if you're going to Maywood Boxing, you're working. Goes a wild card for sparring. Oh, yeah, now you got some of the best fun right there all over Southern California. Tough Mexican sparring in Maywell. You got some of the best international sparring yeah. at Wild Card. I mean, a, a lot of these, a lot of these gyms in the east side of LA. I mean, you get the best work. But Eddie said the thing he had to do with uh, Joshua Garcia as they got him is the footwork, the footwork, the footwork, the footwork, and you got to throw the jab. He wanted to see Garcia try to establish the jab. And I love, I love hearing that. I mean, that's exactly what a trainer needs to be instilling in their fighters, especially in the full round fights. You know, it's, it all starts in the foundation, your feet, you know, your range. Oh, right hand from Garcia, right on the tip of the chin. Lozada is not going to be able to come back from that. It's way too early to cover. And it's it. over. Yep. A first round KO for Joshua Garcia. That was a vicious right hand right on the chin. You cannot get hit that cleanly, that early. Good stoppage by the referee. What a shot. Lozada, no idea where he's at. He got caught around the corner. Joshua Garcia celebrating. Brings a big crowd from Moreno Valley. His dad, Becca, has a fighter. His younger brother is an amateur fighter. His younger, younger brother is a wrestler. As we're checking out Eric Lozada, he buckled right away. He was hit hard by Moreno. And Moreno only has three stoppages. Well, he has the heavy hands. Well, he has three stoppages in six fights. That's 50% knockout ratio. That shows that he got power in both hands so far. Uh, uh, the, the first couple of fights were debut guys or were the first rounders. Hey, I never, I never knocked out a I debut guy. So look, credit, that credit is, different. is dude. That's a right that hand right different. there. That's a beautiful right hand. Set it up with a nice long jab. But look at how he timed that jab. He didn't throw that right hand right away. It was kind of like an archer releasing the bow and arrow. He, Look at that left hand, pause, boom, oh. right on the tip of the button. Shots like that you don't recover from. Lozada, I doubt he was going to get up. I'm glad, the referee, right away. I'm glad the referee stopped this fight because that shot was way too clean. And the way he felt and buckled down like that, it's like spirit left out of his body. I'll tell you this, Sergio, I've done all of Garcia's professional fights, the uh, six before this. He did not look like a kid who had power. And he did not look like a kid this smooth. Whatever he's doing with Eddie Gonzalez is really, really good. And he looks different tonight. He got a first-round KO. Joe Martinez to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. One minute, 45 seconds. Round number one. Referee Gerard White puts a halt to this fight. For your winner by way of knockout, he is still undefeated. El Americano, Joshua Garcia! Nickname El Americano, Joshua Garcia. And there you see with Eddie. So 7 and 0, 4 KOs. And Eddie told us, you said you loved this, Sergio, where established the jab. It was that jab that set up the knockout. Yeah, but it's also, you know, the footwork, you know, he didn't fall off balance. He, he didn't he didn't uh, throw the right hand over his left foot. You know, he kept the foundation set, and that's what exactly they're working on. You know, it all starts with the footwork, then it comes with the speed, and then it comes with the technique, and then boom, shots like that, right on the tip of the chin. They they they, they work out by themselves. I mean, it's a beautiful shot. You see the team? Marky to come in, Joel Diaz. And Joel De La Hoya with when, him? When you land that cleanly, Beto, I bet you if you ask Joshua Garcia, did that feel like a hard punch? He's going to say nope, and that's exactly what you want to hear. It's technique that got the knockout.
a draw, a KO, and three more fights to go, including the main event, the Jojo Diaz, Ricky Perez fight on Golden Boy Fight Night in LA. Be the greatest atmosphere you have ever witnessed in a boxing ring. Here we go. Ooh, yeah. A blistering knockout. Tremendous action. A real deal strikes again. Oh. The knockdown was big. Zapata absolutely relentless. What a shot. That's a money punch. Clean and effective. This is a championship fight. Go the boy fight night commerce casino in southern california see the winner joshua garcia flashing on the screen two fights done three more to go of course the main event jojo diaz against jesus ricky perez our reporter brandy flores is, is with a special guest right now here with Yocasta Valle, who is getting ready for a huge fight. The chance to take on Sinisa Estrada for the undisputed championship titles at 105 pounds. How excited are you for this opportunity and the fact that Golden Boy was able to help you make this happen? No, estoy super emocionado por esta pelea. Eh, mi sueño es ser campeón absoluta. Por eso le hemos trabajado durante muchísimos años y estamos a un paso de cumplirlo. She's super excited about this fight. She's always dreamed to be undisputed uh, champion, and uh, she's working hard for, for this fight. And there was a lot of back and forth between you and Sanisa. She says that she's coming for you, your trainer, your whole camp, and making it pretty personal. She says that it is. Are you taking this personal at all? No, para mí no es personal. Yo es, o sea, es la pelea. Es algo mi sueño, y yo voy a hablarlo en el ring, trabajarlo fuerte. No, uh, for me, it's not personal. It's just I want to be undisputed, and she has the belt. In order for me to be undisputed, I have to, to win her. So I'm just going for the belts. It's not personal. March 29th cannot get here soon enough. What can fans expect from you that night? Bueno, van a ver a una Yoka dándolo todo. Van a ver la mejor versión de mí este 29 de marzo. No se la pueden perder porque créanme que estoy agradecida con Golden Boy por hacer, darme esta gran oportunidad también en Top Rank. Que bueno... Voy a darlo todo y van a ver una gran pelea campeona versus campeona. Ok, uh, basically, you're going to see the best version of Yoka ever. I'm working so hard for this, it's my dream. She wants to uh, say thank you to Golden Boy for making this happen. Also top rank and don't miss the fight because it's going to be champion against champion and uh, fireworks. And how important is it, the rise of women's boxing? You're taking on the best. It's going to be an absolute show. How excited are you to be a part of women's boxing just getting better and getting more exposure? Bueno, este es una gran pelea que siento que hace crecer más el boxeo femenino. Eh, nos estamos, bueno, poniendo en grandes peleas y esa pelea no va a ser la excepción. Eh, aparte, mi sueño es ser campeona y dar, darlo todo por, el, por las mujeres, ¿verdad? Es una gran exposición para las futuras generaciones. Basically, uh, it's going to be a great fight for female uh, boxing. Uh, the exposure that uh, this fight is going to give to female uh, boxing is amazing and that's what uh, makes her more motivated to go to this fight and make history for the sport for the woman yoga good luck we can't wait to see you on march 29th for that undisputed title against anisa estrada back to you and betho and sergio ringside Costa Valle against anisa estrada is going to be a fight you do not want to miss Beautiful evening here in Southern California. It rained a couple days ago. It's all clear. It's wonderful. And it's ready for Golden Boy Fight Night. You see the downtown LA skyline headquarters of Golden Boy Promotions who recently signed Jorge El Nino Dorado Chavez. He's undefeated. Taking on Duel Oguin in this one. And Chavez is the taller fighter. This one, Sergio. It's, well, the, the same height, but he's going to be the younger fighter. He's going to have the reach advantage by three inches. And the undefeated record right here. I mean, look, when you have 34 losses in 57 fights, you know you're the B side. But uh, Chavez is still fighting a veteran with 57 fights. Joe Martinez is ready to bring him out.
There you see Joe walking into the ring. Well, fine fans, we are set to go with the next fight tonight. Six rounds is scheduled in the featherweight division. And first to make his way to the ring, fighting into the blue corner from Jalisco. Here is the OG! The veteran of veterans, Jewel Ogin. An ugly record, 16, 34, and 7. Do not get fooled by that. He is tough as nails. He'll fight you anywhere. You see how he's walking out by himself? That's how he travels, Serge. I love it. I love it. One man, lone wolf right there. And this is what you want to look at. Yes, he has 34 losses, but he only got stopped three times. That's a tough hombre right there. That's a guy that can take a big shot. He knows he's a B-side. He's no, he knows he's not here to win, but he's here not to get knocked out and try to do the knocking out against an un, uh, uh, unblemished, uh, undefeated fighter in Jorge Chavez. And if you take him lightly, about every 10 to 12 fights, you'll beat an undefeated fighter. That's yeah. what Yul Ogin does. And uh, yeah, tough dude from Guadalajara. You got two tough guys from Mexico here. You got the Guadalajara against Tijuana. I mean, that's, that's, that, it doesn't get tougher than that for Mexican boxing. Oh, yeah. And next to make his way to the ring, he is led by SOA Musica recording artist Gustavo Palavax, dropping his new single, Mobo Cherry. Here is Jorge Chavez! What kind of music is that, Beto? It's like a mix or something. Well, regional, so it's Gustavo Palafox. He's gonna be singing. This is Chavez's homie right here. Oh, he's not lip syncing, okay. Oh, when you're coming in with a sombrero and a chaleco, you better be able to, you know, back it up. Uh, if you have somebody walking out singing for you, you only have nine fights, you better show out. We'll see what Chavez is all about. He's got the talent. He's 9 0, 7 KOs. Trained by Hector Lopez, who trains Alexis Rocha. And you know, Hector does not mess around there at uh, CKO Boxing, SOA Fitness, in Santa Ana, California. And there's Joe Logan, like, I'm out of breath, bro. Whatever. Yes, that is a good. Tattoo exactly like Miguel Cotto, that's what he wanted. Nino Dorado from Tijuana and San Diego. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go once again. This bounce get it for six rounds in the featherweight division. The three judges scoring at ringside, Jerry Cantu, Tiffany Clinton, and Dr. Lou Moret. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Thomas Taylor. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with black. He weighed in officially 124 pounds even. This 57 fight veteran joins us from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Here is Dio Ogi. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with red. He weighed in 123 and one half pounds. And nine bounces, of the young professional. He is perfect in the ring. Nine victories, no defeats. Seven big wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando el hijo invicto desde Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Jorge Chávez. Watch in two seconds. Okay, coaches, belt line, full waistband on both sides is going to be good, okay? You got my instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to your corner, gentlemen. Tom Taylor, one of the Jeremy best referees good. in boxing. So you get to the biggest fights for him, expanding in charge tonight of this Whoa, fight. You good? Jorge Chavez and Dio Ogin. 
Chavez. Turn pro on the Jaime Munguia, Gabriel's Auto undercard back in 2021. You ready? Got a knockout of Jerson Ortiz in December. That was in the second round. He's in the black Yolo game. 35 year old from Guadalajara. Yolo is just going to stand there. He's trying to cut you out. He, he's rugged. He makes it ugly. Yeah, guys like that, you gotta you know be patient with you know because they're they're ready just to pounce on you and counter you with something wild or something over top of Nuki. So Chavez needs to establish that jab and you know stay, up, stay focused, up. stay polished, and don't get hit with nothing you know silly. Don't don't get hit with nothing dumb, especially a headbutt. You know when you are dealing with a rugged fighter like Ogin, you also gotta watch out for headbutts and elbows. 40th straight fight in the U.S. I met Duel Ogin when Golden Boy used to have fights at the Belasco. He just showed up. By that time, he had a winning record. And he's fought every single undefeated Golden Boy prospect since 2016. Incredible. I mean, in 50, he's beat a couple of them. In 57 fights. I mean, this is the definition of a road warrior. You know, someone that fight anyone, anytime. And they'll test pro uh, prospects. So we're going to see, you know, Chavez get, you know, touched up a little bit. You know, someone with that much experience, they know how to get to him. You will fight at 22, 26, and 30. He stays in the gym. He got called for this one. Okay, on stop, stop, Monday. stop, stop, stop. Let me see that. Jumped on the right, plane see. that night. I right. love that. You sure? That's what he does. That's hey, we got an who he is. The, no the, the, the black one of boxing. Jump, we okay? respect the guys alike him. You need a, when you need an opponent, dial up Dewey. Yeah, he shows up. Nice job there. Nice job there by Chavez, uh, touching him up and finishing off with a hook. Right now in the first round, Chavez is just concentrating on foot feints, nothing strong, just speed and, and, and jabs right now. Alternate the jab to the chest, the chin, the body. That will set up the bigger shots. But right now, don't throw anything hard at uh, Ogin, especially nothing where you can fall off balance. That's a knockdown. A knockdown from Jules Ogin. Beautiful time. Jab right there because Five, Chavez came in. Six. 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 Seven. Eight. 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 Don't get fooled. Timing Eight. beats power. Timing beats speed. And that's exactly what Ogin did right there. Let him go. Let him go. That to the solar plex. Oh, we got him. Look like it. It looked like he was on the chin. His back was towards us, but yeah, it's a tangled run. But regardless, John is down for the first time in this fight. He's been down before in his career, and he came back and knocked out his opponent. Either way, he went down, and he wasn't complaining about it. It's a good call by Thomas Taylor, as always. Ogin now with the jab. Yeah, that jab shook up. Ogin, the power of a jab when it's timed well. You know, you you time any punch well and do it right. On the chin, you're gonna see the knees buckle. Scheduled for six rounds. Golden Boy Fight Night, undefeated. Or get Chavez. Especially with those eight ounce gloves. Right, stop, you know, stop, 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 no punch, no punch. Just, Listen for that belt, gentlemen. Clean, you're gonna shake up your opponent. Beautiful. Yeah, right by Chavez at the end of the round. Hey, Louie, you got the knockdown, right? Okay, Louie, eh? Louie, eh? Okay, real good. Jerry, you got the knockdown? You gotta move your waist okay. a little bit more. Don't make it easy for him. I gotta work a little bit more. When you're backing him up, vamos bien. Quiero la derecha. Si tiras un jab, he te jala. So second jab, double jab, then the right. Yeah. Okay. Vivo con las manos, más apretaditas. Okay. How you feel? Good. Que no pasa nada. That's nothing. All right. Relax. Relax. You know, calm down a little bit. I want you to flirt a little bit more, pero. Don't get your hands too wide way. Step off to the side. Okay? No deep breath. No pasa nada. Vamos a chicar. Okay, we gotta get that point back. Bien calmadito. Double jab. Look, look at the shotgun jab. It was right there. You gotta, you gotta give Chavez credit. He was aiming for the jab down to the solar plexus, to the body, which I did land. Unfortunately, Ogin caught him cleanly right on the chin. I mean, that was a beautiful shot. But that well, was let it go. Let it go. Hold the arm up. Hector Lopez right, telling Charlie G, don't pass it on, let them happen. I like that Spanish by Hector Lopez, love it, huh? What happened to the Golden Boy fight night, amigo? <laughs> Where's Grisham in the corner to get the stand? That at? Oh, okay, no. Let the arm go. Pull it out. And that's because uh, Chavez is group with Tijuana and San Diego. Took 40 kids going back and forth. There's a lot of fans here, so there's a lot of tickets. Brandy Flores, woman around the ring. What do you got, Brandy? Yeah, just over here in the red corner, telling.
telling Jorge, hey, you got to relax, calm down. You just got dropped a little bit, but you're good. Telling him to not get out of focus and to stick to their game plan. They're just trying to regain his confidence right here, guys. Like to regain the confidence, you got to start touching up. Ogin, he's there to touch up, so just, you know, throw that jab out there. You know, let Ogin run into the right hand. Well, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a veteran. He comes in forward, so you're bouncing on something. But let him run into it. Don't go looking for it. Let it go. Let it go. Good uppercut there by Chavez. I like that speed. You know, fighters like, fighters like, do uh, again. You want to, you want to come up from the bottom, pick up their head, and come around the guard. You know, concentrate on speed. Ogin fought eight times in 2022, nine in 2023. He said he wants to fight ten times this year. I think Chavez found a home for the left and right uppercut. You know, Ogin's trying to hide down there, and Chavez doing the right thing by picking up the chin. You know, not, not letting them, you know, hide anywhere. Good shots, good uppercuts. And that will set up the hooks as well. See, there you go. There's the uppercut. He found the home for Chavez. Smart fighter for the Chavez because it takes timing. It takes breaking the distance, knowing your range, and it takes confidence to throw that. Right hand. Left hook from Chavez. Beautiful shot by Chavez. He's rocking. Oh, he with those left hooks. Ogin is tough, man. But look at the footwork by Jorge Chavez. I mean, he's not smothering himself, not letting Ogin, you know, uh, break that range. It's footwork that's actually doing the damage aside from those left hooks. Good work from Jorge Chavez. He's progressing nicely in his career. Oh, definitely. I mean, they're, I mean for a fighter that's mine to know, I like what I'm seeing. I like the footwork, the foundation. He doesn't right, smother himself. He backs up, he Good counters, job. but he doesn't jump back far enough to where he's out of out of reach to land something just a nice power boxer for the Chavez much better round for Jorge Chavez if he settles in against Joel Ogin this was scheduled for six rounds golden boy fight night okay. Okay. working away towards the main event of Joel Joel Diaz and Jesus Perez the uppercuts will land again Beto uh, Ogin's bound to land Ogin's gonna get hit with those, those uppercuts right once again Fight's done. We're on a third, and there's the main event. Joseph Diaz Jr. with his son, Zenith. You know what Zenith means? What we got? The highest point. I didn't look that up there. That's that sure high education, huh? Bill High School, by the way. And Ricky Bennett locked in. Just a blue sweatsuit. That's it. His entire team in blue. Yesterday they're all in white. No logos, no name, no nothing. No frills with this young man. Hey, listen, I, I love what I'm seeing. Not only at the win, how his body looks, the focus, everything he said at the fighter mean. But I love the fact that he doesn't care about what he's dressed like. You know, he's here to take care of business and be a former champion. Forget the wardrobe. Let's go. Life can change. That's our main event still to come. Right now, Jorge Chavez in the black and Gulo Gein, the veteran who dropped Chavez in the first round. Hector Lo Lopez, Chavez's trainer, takes him to Robert Garcia's gym in Moreno Valley to spar a lot of his guys. Trying to get better sparring out there in that part. And you got some of the best fighters training with Robert Garcia. So right, whether stop, you're stop, going stop, to watch. wild card in the West Yo. or going all the way out there, Moreno Valley, you're getting the best work in Southern California. Yeah, also, Schedule to spar some of the guys that Rudy Hernandez has, the veteran here at Maywood. Chavez with the power punches, much better round two for him. Ogin's not going to throw power. He's not. He's, he's going to be the guy that cuts you Hold with a ball, thousand right. paper cuts. Man. Good job. Just going to get you like that. Yeah, no, and, and he can he can uh, actually. There's an uppercut. He can be successful doing that. He knows what he's doing. He's not a power puncher. He's there to frustrate you. He's there to last the distance, pick and puck at you. But he's not going to throw anything hard or powerful. He knows his game. He's a spoiler, you know. Guys like you or he, they're, they're spoilers. They're here to, they know they're the B-side. If, if they can go and take a young prospect to distance, they did their job. Third straight undefeated fighter Ogin's going up against. Fifth in his last six fights, and Ogin was some swelling on his left eye. And for Jorge Chavez, you know, it's going to be a, a tall task 
to get a knockout against a veteran of 57 fights. He's only been stopped three times, but if you can knock out a fighter like Ogin, that's a major feather in your head with only nine fights. The you know, last time he was stopped in 2017 by Orlando Garcia, who was trained by Eddie Reynoso, and that was a personal one. Those two did not like each other. See, I like the I like what Chad is doing there. He's not he's not overloading. He's not falling off balance. He's touching Ogin, and Ogin's not liking that because he, he doesn't know where to counter. He doesn't know what what punch is going to be the hard one, so he doesn't know which one to actually throw a punch at. Really smart punching by Jorge Chavez. And Chavez did not know about Ogin until Tuesday. Look at that. Nice counter shot by Chavez. So he's alternating his speed, alternating his power, his Ooh, distance. That's nice. Beautiful shot right there. He didn't come in with a 1-2. He alternated with a 2-1. Tricky shot, man. I love what I'm seeing with Chavez. Good hooks from Chavez here in the third round. He's settled down. Oh, yeah. Right half from Chavez. Moving nicely. The footwork. I see it now. I see what you're talking about. The footwork is nice, man. I mean, uh, it, it all starts with that. He doesn't fall off balance. Now he's not overloading or, 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 or throwing too much power with his shots. You know, he's looking for the right shot, and he's doing it with, with technique and speed instead of power and overloading. Solid round for Jorge Chavez. He's starting to come on. Twelve round eliminator for the IBF and WBA lightweight world championship. Camarón William Cepeda takes on Maxi Hughes at the Cosmo in Las Vegas Saturday, March 16th. Ooh, that's gonna be a good one. Be a real good one. Boxer versus brawler. I mean, that's exactly what we want to see. The style matchups. And look, man, Chavez, I think that was a brilliant round for him. I mean, look, landing that right hand, getting out of distance, out of range, not pulling his head back. He takes his feet back. So that's that's beautiful footwork. And look, there's that 2-1 I was talking about. That threw Ogin off balance. He was expecting the 1-2. He came in through the front door with a 2. And then here you see Chavez turning southpaw and back to orthodox, feeling comfortable and confident. You heard Hector Lopez in his corner come and see, telling Chavez he's slowing down. Talking about Ogin. Oh, good jab there. A the power jab by Chavez. Good job. Beautiful time shot. The hooks are landing nicely for Jorge Chavez the last couple rounds. Chavez is looking sharp, man. I, I really like what I'm seeing with him. Chavez has a huge social media following. Not because of Ryan Garcia style. He was on a show with Mr. Beast, the YouTuber. Oh, yeah, I have no clue who they are. Don't, don't worry, everybody else listening to us. Neither do I, Gabe. <laughs> we, uh... Yeah, he, he gained a bunch of followers off that. He has, like, over six figures in the followers. And the copy box punches were on his side. So he was washing cars. He was selling insurance. He's doing everything. And finally got with Hector Lopez. And he said, guy, you, you want to be good? You got to be dedicated to boxing. You can't be part time. Yeah, this is a beautiful round by Jorge Chavez. I mean, he, he's he's not even. Look at that. I mean, it's beautiful footwork, beautiful angles. I mean, he's fighting with his hands off, so cool and confident. Watch the show. You know, focusing on speed, picking the right shots, not forgetting the body. I mean, yeah. So he this, this 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 is style right here. I like what I'm watching. His first three fights. Serge did not look like this. He would come out thousand miles an hour trying to overpower you, not get all that stuff, because he wasn't that's not boxing gonna, all the time. That's not gonna work. He wasn't training full time. That's not gonna that's not gonna work in the pros, man. You gotta calm down, you gotta be loose, you gotta be fluid, you can't overload on shots. And that's what you that's what you're seeing here in this round. This is beautiful boxing, power boxing. You can see that Ogin is afraid of coming in the front door because he's afraid to get countered by the sharp punches of Chavez. Like, look at that. They didn't laugh, but that was nice. setting traps isn't he i just you know he, he, he's so calm in there you know when you're that calm not only can you find the right counter but you could also take a better shot you know you're right you're standing in the pocket you're not afraid of what's coming back Ogin doesn't really have the speed to intimidate him so yeah man i mean he's playing to the crowd and fighting with the hands down and comfortable you yeah, don't I'm let, let a guy go. like 
Abdul Ogin hang around, get comfortable. And Chavez, after getting dropped in the first round, controlling this fight. Yep. Good punch selection, Chavez. I mean, he threw every shot right there. Right hook, and then he went down to the body, went back to the jab, smothered, stepped back. I mean, that was a beautiful round. Beautiful round. Right up, solid right round by Nino Dorado de Tijuana, Jorge Chavez. Hey, be careful when you start training. Get off the fucking rope. Thank you, Luke. Look at what happens when you're on the rope, all right? How you feel? Good. I want you to start feigning him a little bit more. Don't let him get that confidence. He's going to start walking you down. Feign him a little bit. Come get it. Come get it. I mean, you go to Radio Road during Super Bowl, you expect to see boxers going back and forth. John in the video, they went everywhere. And Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, John back and forth. And we're going to see that April 20th. Live on the zone, Haney defends his belt and a unbeaten record against Ryan in Vegas. And these two are not stopping. Bill Haney's going at it. Devin's going at it. Ryan's going at it. These are two young fighters under 25 fighting the absolute best. Not, a, not avoiding the smoke. Takes it back to the 80s, man, where the best were fighting the best. You know, one loss wasn't going to determine them. You know, Garcia lost to a beast in tank, got paid millions of dollars, and now he's back on another mega fight against, uh, you know, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters right now in Devin Haney. Credit to both of them for taking those fights. Absolutely. Don't talk about it, be about it. They're both doing it. We'll see that on the 20th. Oh, Vegas going to be lit that week. Fifth round of action. Chavez, you know, this is a six-round fight. He knows, he's smart enough to know that he's not going to, you know, knock out a fighter like Ogin. You know, 57 fights, only been stopped three times. So I like what Chavez is doing. You know, he's going for the distance. He's picking and pecking, working on some stuff, looking good, looking fluid, sharp. I, I like this, man. I mean, the knockouts will come. He has the power, but in six-round, you know, uh, fights against fighters that aren't accustomed going down, I think he's doing the smart thing, just working on his craft. Getting work, getting experience. He's only got nine professional fights. I'm doing it nice, man. It, yeah. it, it's really artistic looking at him. I, I don't know if it's, you know, looking like that on television, but watching him in person, it's really brilliant, man. The footwork, how he doesn't smother oh, yeah, himself. Man. He uses the entire ring, every shot in the book. This is stuff that helps you when you're at fight 15 and 18, right? When you're trying to figure out what's going on with you. It actually looks like he's in the fight 15, 16. Yeah. He fights that that calm and, and confident. I like I like everything I'm seeing with Jorge Chavez, whether he gets a knockout or not. Yeah, a guy like Joe Ogin. It's a bright, bright future in Chavez. He can make you look ugly, and Chavez is looking good. He's looking pretty. And listen, man, we're not accustomed to seeing him fighters from Tijuana, on, Mexico, guys. power box like this, but I like to say this is new age, new school Mexican yeah. style, you know? You know, not everyone's gonna just get on your chest and take two to land one, you know. Fighters like Eric Morales and Barrera changed that. It's power boxing Mexican style. Chavez, his mom and his sister, to fight for him. Jabs. Nice jabs by Chavez right there. He just controlled OD and kept him at the end of it. You know, just moving to his left, using the ring. Good work. Good <laughs> work from Jorge Chavez. And you can see that he's getting frustrated. Absolutely. Last round. Thank you, Lou. You look much better in that round. Much better. Much better. We're gonna touch gloves at the bell. Set, set on your punches a little bit more. All the matches put two or three together. Step around. Last two round, we're gonna, gonna touch gloves around. at the bell. Don't jump back up. Don't look for one shot. This fucker ain't gonna go down. Este cabrón está más hizo, eh?
Beto. There you go, Beto. You should basically <laughs> Hector Lopez is telling you what yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, telling yeah, you. Don't go for the knockout. He's not going to go anywhere. He's, uh, he's too strong. And he's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Chaka's doing a smart thing, not going for the knockout. He's just picking and pecking. Get in, get the rounds, get out. Here we go. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's artistically. And final round. Go to my fight night, Beto Duran, Sergio Mora. Randy Flores and you, thank you for joining us on this Thursday night, day after Valentine's packed house here at the Commerce Casino and Chavez brought a big crowd from San Diego and Tijuana. Randy Flores, what do you got? Yeah, they're telling Jorge to not look for that knockout, to just keep throwing his combos. He said, this is why we run. This is why you train endurance. So right now, Jorge's looking to finish this fight strong. Yeah, the conditioning factor, not going to be following for Jorge Chavez. Hector raves about his discipline. He and uh, Alexis Rocha battle back and forth about who's going to finish first when they're doing their training. I don't think Ogin liked that body shot. Oh. Chavez landed a left hand right to the body. I think that caught his attention. You can see finally Ogin stepping back. I don't know if Chavez knows that he hurt him to the body. But you can see that Ogin's keeping those elbows tucked in, not throwing any punches, letting the pain go away. Pull it out. Let the arm go. Chavez still coming. Right Watch hand in the hook from Jorge Watch Chavez. This is what Ogin would want to do for the first round, but Chavez never left him. Let him do that. No, it's because he didn't stand in front of him. You know, look, he's, he's moving to his right, moving to his left, pivoting, getting right back to the middle of the ring, staying off the ropes. Just great ring generalship by Jorge Chavez. Oh, and Ogin lands on the left as he switches to the softball. Good shot by Ogin. Caught him off guard with that unorthodox punch from the left-handed stance. Chavez went down in the first. Ogin will not stop moving. Crowd loving it. Less than a minute to go in the fight. And this is why we keep seeing Yulio Ogin come back in 57 fights. And a losing record because he he can do this, you know. He, he, he just falls. He won't stop. Let him go. Let him go. Sorry. Let me tell Chavez. This guy's my favorite fighter. Really, Beto? You don't like anybody? I'm like, no. I love this guy because he shows up and he battles for you. Respect to him. Pull it out, Jorge. Pull it out. That's a slip. Give me gloves. It's on Taylor all over it. Chavez's family to our right just yelling, screaming. You can hear them on the microphone. And Chavez finishing strong. Beautiful shot by Chavez. Stepping back, countering with the right hand, the left. And that's mother in his That's power boxing right there by Jorge Chavez. And closes the show, goes around. Good six rounds between Chavez and Yulo Gein. is tired and Chavez worked him. After getting dropped in the first round, stay composed. Six good rounds between the undefeated Jorge Chavez and the always game veteran Dior Old Game. So that's the way fitness. That's a young fighter that's impressing Sergio Mora. You like him? I, I really like him. I liked everything I saw. I mean, it was a, it was a right punch selection. It, it was beautiful footwork, great ring generalship. He listened to his corner. I think Hector, Hector Lopez has a bright, bright young future with someone like Chavez, man. I like what I saw. March 23rd, Sheffield, England, unbeaten hometown hero Dalton Smith looks to continue his rapid rise up the super lightweight ranks. He takes on three-time world title challenger John Cepeda and Sandy Ryan defends her WBO belt against Terry Harper on the undercard. Did his job, yes, showed up, did. made weight, and he yes, made it semi-difficult. You see Javier Raza go the boy matchmaker. And it wasn't easy for Chavez because he found out about a different opponent on Tuesday. So yesterday, he and his team were looking at videos of game.
Top man, John Michael, who Ogi just met. <laughs> That's what he does. He picks up a guy in the corner. Hey, who wants to win my corner right now? All right, Joe Martinez is ready to make it official. Who won, Joe? Well, ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds, we go to the scorecards, and here are the totals. Tiffany Clinton scores at 60-54. Jerry Kanku and Dr. Lou Moran both have it 58-55. All for your winner by unanimous decision, and still undefeated, Jorge So Team Chavez, take the team picture. Let's take a highlight of this fight. Yeah. Started rough for Chavez. He got dropped in the first. And after that, no problem, Serge. He recovered well. No, he found a, a home for that uppercut. He didn't let he didn't let a, a veteran smother his shots. And that's what you want to see with a young prospect, you know. But it takes footwork. You know, notice how he's stepping back slightly. And then when he comes forward, he gets his shot in, but ready to step back and counter. I mean, oh, he's a tough veteran. I mean, is it one of these journeymen that knows how to fight rugged, knows how to fight small. He knows how to make it, you know, frustrating for a fight, a fighter like Chavez with nine fights, but he passed the test with flying colors. I like what I saw. He wasn't going to stop him. I love the fact that he didn't get frustrated. Just a, a really good performance by Chavez. The combi box for final punch sets. And look, the percentage landed. That's what I, that's what I want to see right there. And 181 punches thrown, 75 landed, 41%. That's that's marksmanship right there. You like to see that from a young prospect. Not throwing away shots. Make your punches count. And yeah, he was really on point. Was Jorge Chavez. Let's look at tonight's fight card. Three fights are done. We got two more to go. The main event is Jojo Diaz against Ricky Perez. So far, we had a draw, a KO, and a decision. What are we going to get next with Eric Tudor and Luis Ramos? The winner, Jorge Chavez. He stays undefeated. Win number 10 for Chavez here on Golden Boy Fight Night. Ah, good night of action. Our first fight of 2024. Showing you the prospects. Beto Duran, alongside former world champion, the Latin snake, Sergio Mora. You're starting to see prospects making some names for themselves, getting big opportunities, and they want to get to the big stage on a Saturday night. Gabe Rosado was really high on Camarón Cepeda. Sergio Mora, where are you at on Camarón Cepeda? I love Cepeda. I've called several of his fights. Yeah. I mean, when he knocked out Hector Tanahara, that's why I knew he was a real deal. I mean, when you throw that many punches like he did against Jojo Diaz, yeah. what they broke records in the lightweight lightweight records with over 1,500 yeah. punches, that's what you want to see. And he does it from the left-handed stance. He's a power puncher, a volume puncher. He's a Mexican, so he has the popular fights. But, yeah, everything you want to see in a young contender William Camarón de Peda has it. The body punching, you know, beating Joe, 
Jojo Diaz the way he did. Super I mean, easy. He, I mean, he... That wasn't supposed to happen that easy. No, not that easy. Not against a former champion like that. And, you know, Diaz has been against in there against the best. And the way that Camarón de Pela just outworked them you know everything was on his side the power the, the punches the body shots everything so it's going to be hard to stop and beat a fighter like Zepeda like that yeah we saw Camarón a few years ago we were in Chihuahua Mexico along with Todd Grisham we saw Camarón on that show and like wait who is this guy he does not stop throwing Todd liked him everybody likes him Golden Boy really loves him and Camarón is knocking on the door for a potential world title belt and the thing about Camarón you mentioned that the fight against Kanahara at LAFC Stadium, it was like, whoa. It was early in the afternoon. It was one of those where not many people are paying attention. All of a sudden, everybody in the building was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's that Who's guy? This? Who's this guy? Mm -hmm. And the way that he continues to go, working with Panda, Jaina Hot, and working well in a Mexico City where he trains, this is a guy in Camarón Cepeda. He just shows up, doesn't trash talk anybody, and just beats you down. Like the fight he had against Marcito Hesta. Marcito's one of the pros' pros, and it was here. You're like, my goodness, this guy is going to be a monster in the division, isn't he? It's a promoter's dream. Someone that just loves to fight, is really good at it, and he'll fight anyone they put in front of him. Yeah. So, yeah, that's exactly why Golden Boy keeps, you know, bringing him back, keeping him busy. And against Maxi Hughes, he's in there against a similar style matchup like Hector Tanahara. Someone that doesn't have much of a, 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 a knockout ratio yeah. or a big punch, but he does have footwork. He can make it tricky. He can make it, you know, a, a little hard for you to track him down. The Peta does have heavy feet, but he has heavy hands to go with it. So it's going to be an interesting style and a clash of styles between both of them. So Zepeda said he wants to fight for a title. Well, he's going to probably have to be somebody's mandatory to get an opportunity at one of the belts. And where is he at in the rankings? As Camarón coming from Mexico, he said, I thought I had dreams of going to the Olympics. It wasn't going to happen. Had to work his way out of Mexico. And now here he is in the ring ratings. Number five. And you got Lomachenko up there. Tank, Pitbull, Shakur, right around five. Good for him? Great that spot. I mean, he's right in the middle. I mean, I, I agree where he's at right there. But yeah. look, any of those names, these guys are not going to look his way. That's how much of a, of a of a tornado he is. I mean, he's a nonstop puncher, and he has a heavy hand, left and right, comes from the southpaw stance. He's always in front of you. So, yeah, it's not going to be an easy fight for any of these fighters. But could you imagine <laughs> the style match between the Peta and Isak Cruz? I mean, that would be like yeah. two Mexican trains colliding. But whoever it is, whether it's the top or the bottom, anyone's going to have a hard time to handle with Camarón Zepeda. And that'll be a good one between Zepeda and Maxi Hughes, who's no pushover at all. For more on what's going on, let's check in with Brandy Flores. Yeah, I'm here with someone who we've seen grow up on Golden Boy Fight Night, Victor Morales. Victor, you are on the undercard of the William Zepeda fight. How excited are you come March 16th to show what you got? March 16th, we're super excited. Another Zepeda undercard, another amazing night of boxing, just like tonight. Both title eliminators, and we're going to go out there and do what we do best. A featherweight eliminator. How uh, are giddy of anticipation are you with? Because knowing that you are just that much closer to getting a shot at becoming a world champion. We're right there. I mean, the fight with Diego really put me where I wanted to be. That's what I asked for. And now we're we're right there. We're we're right there. We're scratching at it. It's got to be exciting for you. It's still the beginning of the year, 2024. As you head into this new year, what are some goals that you have for yourself besides obviously getting that shot at a world title? But as a boxer, you know, you kind of recap the year. What are you looking forward to in 2024? We're going to focus on this fight. We're going to focus on the next one, hopefully being a world title. I want to go right into it after this one. And whatever the rest of the year has, what we're going to do. And how do you see yourself stacking up in the featherweight division? I'm the guy. I think I'm the guy. I just haven't been able to have the platform to show it, and that's what we're doing now. All right, and we'll see March 16th on the Williams and Bella undercard. Sergio Beto, back to you guys. Victor Morales growing up before our eyes here in Golden Boy Fight Night. I give the biggest show. Look at that Sixth Street Bridge. Beautiful. The way it's lit up, moving.
And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the next bout tonight, the Cole featured bout this evening, eight rounds scheduled in the super welterweight division. And first to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner from Puerto Rico, here is Luis Ramos. And the ball ready to make his way to the red corner from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Here is Eric Tudor. Interesting spot, Sergio. Eric Tudor. You were there for his last fight. Did not go well for him. No, it did not, but uh, you know, this is what we want to see with prospects. How are they gonna handle defeat? Eric Tudor has his first blemish on his record. Nine and one here. I mean it looks good when you're winning. You know, he's beating everyone to put in front of him, but now it takes a young man to show character. How are you gonna respond to losing your first fight? You know, some guys can go the opposite way, some guys get better. When it comes to Eric Tudor, we're going to find out against a tough fighter in Luis Ramos, who also carries power. Six wins, six by knockout. It's going to be an interesting style matchup between two tall punchers, especially if Tudor needs to make a statement coming off a loss. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go with our cold featured bout this evening. Eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the super welterweight division. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside. Jerry Cantu, Tiffany Clinton, and Zacharia. And inside the ring, your referee in charge, Eddie Hernandez. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing gray trunks, trimmed in pink, he weighed in 153 and three quarter pounds. In nine professional fights, his record stands at six victories. Two defeats, one draw, all six wins coming by way of knockout. Desde Trujillo Alto, Puerto Rico, here is El Borriqua, Luis Ramos. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing tonight black trunks trimmed in silver. He weighed it officially 153 and one quarter pounds. And in 10 fights, holds a record of nine victories. Just one defeat. Six big wins coming by way of knockout from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Here is Step back, step back. All right, gentlemen, been over the rules with your balls, your professionals. I expect you to get yourself that professional. Touch gloves. Good luck. God bless the Lord. 
Eddie Hernandez Jr., the third man in the ring, as we get ready to go, our co-feature, Eric Tudor, who has a new team on his side. He went back to his amateur coach, Jeff Horitz. After his loss, Luis Ramos, who fought last weekend in Colombia. I, like, are you sure? Seriously, you fight Colombia? He's like, his team's like, it was a fight, but we knew we were going to win. Okay. So it was a chance to make some money. Yeah, but you still have to be sore. I mean, seven days is not enough to, to recover was, from a uh, camp and a professional fight. So you can bet he's still sore. From what they said, it wasn't that hard. Well, Take it for what it is. <laughs> you can figure that one out. But right now it's going to be hard against Eric Tudor, the Romanian national. Training in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His younger brother made his pro debut earlier tonight and a split draw. So, Sergio, when you come back after a loss the first time, you your attitude is different, right? It has to be. Then you go and you change the team. Well, your attitude is you get bitter. You know, you get you took your first loss. You know, you, when when you're a hot prospect, you know, especially with the amateur background that Tudor had, you you're expected to beat guys in, on this level. You know, you want to get to the to 15, 16, 17, and 0 and become a fringe contender undefeated. But now you got your first loss and. You know, the, the, everything's against you now. Now you now all eyes are on you. You can't have another bad performance. Tudor lost to Jose Luis Sanchez last October at the Cosmo in Vegas. Uh, Sanchez was 13-3-1 at the time. And Tudor stop, stop, was... Stop, 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 stop. Had his okay. eye busted hey, up. You don't hit behind the head. Sorry, sorry. You don't hit he behind the head He went back either, and they right? diagnosed it as a... Box. Fractured orbital bone. Fractured. We've been seeing a, we've been seeing a lot of those uh, recently in boxing. You know, uh, I yes. don't know what I don't know what's changed, whether the, the the gloves or something. But yeah, I haven't seen that many broken Watch fractured, the head. Watch fractured behind the head. orbital bones. Uh, you know, in my career. Yeah, they told them it was a slight fracture. I'm like, either you are here or not. But that was a fight of adversity. He went back, retooled his team. He feels different now. That was a fight where there was a lot of blood. He just never looked comfortable, comfortable that night. He's getting comfortable right now. And, uh, Ramos is coming forward on the front foot. You know, he's doing the right right thing, you know, poking that hard jab, you know, backing up Tudor, but Tudor's doing the right thing, staying off the ropes, you know, moving laterally, you know. He's looking good on his feet, but offensively, you know, he's not doing enough to keep Ramos off or get Ramos respect to see it. He said he was disappointed about the loss, but not discouraged. Here he is a co-feature tonight. Nice combination right there. His punches were blocked, but you know, once you start getting loose Watch like that and it. letting your hands go like like you just Step did, you can get guys. the pivot. You know, you, you start feeling it again, you know, especially coming off a loss. That's, that's what you want to see. Just like that, bro. Keep touching him with those jabs. Make him miss. Listen, this round let's touch him a little bit to the body, right? So when you, when you start touching coming in there and you're making a miss, you start touching him down to the body where you keep throwing him down like that. Go well. Stay on that jab. Got it. It's just interesting background for these two. Tudor, dad brought him in the sport of boxing, early big amateur career for the Romanian national team where Luis Ramos from Puerto Rico, San Juan, playing football. He was a Seahawks fan. He was a receiver, a DB, then around 16, 17, got into boxing. So the amateur side definitely inside of Tudor. Ramos learning on the fly, as he said. So he had that beast mode, Marshawn Lynch attitude about him. See how that translates to boxing. As he 
Swings for the fences with that right hand. And you can see Ramos doesn't have the amateur pedigree of Tudor, you know, not, not only because the, the punches that he throws are really heavy, you know, his heavy foot, Luis Ramos is, and they, Tudor's a lot more fluid. You know, he doesn't fall off balance. You know, he, he, he's more accurate with shots like that. You know, picking and pecking with that jab, not staying in front of Ramos. So you can see, you know, the, the, the fact that one, one guy's more polished but much more experience as an amateur. And that's ever Tudor. Oh, good body shot by Tudor right there. He bent his knees, looked down, got him right in the stomach. Yeah, you got to give Ramos credit there. He took that shot pretty well. Yeah, Ramos, last September, got knocked out in the first round by Giovanni Estella in Orlando, Florida. He said, I was just overconfident because a friend of mine had sparred Estella. said he doesn't hit that hard. So put his guard down, overconfident. Got caught in the first round. Overconfidence will get you all the time in boxing. He's caught with the left hook by Tudor. He lands up nice. Yeah, you can see how heavy the feet are by Ramos by when he misses his punches. You know, he, fall, he, he throws everything behind it and all the leverage behind that punch. Easy to counter. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Right if he can start focusing on speed and trying to catch Ramos when he misses the shot. Or just like that. Right hand from Tudor. I see Tudor throw the exact same uh, roundhouse punch, but down to the belly. You know, if you can actually get the... You can see that Ramos keeps his elbows out. So if you can go around the guard, you might get a good clean body shot and hurt Ramos with the body. There we go, see? We'll try to go around the guard uh, of, of the long arms of Ramos. The uppercut by Tudor. See how Ramos keeps his elbows, you know, poked Tight. out? Yeah. No, no, they're actually, winged? Yeah, they're winged out. They're poked out. So there's there's a there's, the belt, there's an entryway for a body shot if Tudor can actually, you know, concentrate on and zero in on, on a good clean body shot. You got that wing flapping out like Joe Morgan. I know you don't know the reference, but somebody does. I have no clue what that is. Joe, Joe Morgan, Morgan played for the Reds in the Big Red Machine in the 70s. He used to bat left-handed, and he'd have a little wing flap. Right, so he'd be bat like this, and he'd have flapping his wing, and leave it exposed, just like you're talking about. <laughs> okay, the Joe Morgan. Don't just pull out with your head straight up like that when you're going out to the side. Main event coming up, there he is. Joseph, Jojo Diaz Jr., former champ. Going to mix with his father, Joseph Sr. A lot on the line for Jojo, where he trying to make his way back into contender status. If you go gatekeeper, and Ricky Perez from Tijuana. He's had that same locked in face since he got here three hours ago. Poker face, but look, the shoulders, the body doesn't lie. This man is in great shape and prepared for this opportunity. I'm telling you, this is gonna be a it's gonna be a very tough fight for Jojo Diaz. It's be a slugfest. That's our main event still to come. Third round of action. This was scheduled for eight. The super welterweight division. Thanks for joining us wherever you may be. Go in the boy fight night. First one of the year. Work out of it, work out of it, guys. Work out. Let him go. Let him go. It's all Tudor on the copy box, as expected. He's the boxer. So when does the Tudor start getting out of like second gear, Sergio? I think right now, right about now, is a, you gotta you gotta start getting a little bit of respect from Ramos. Ramos coming out in a little bit too, you know, he's walking in. You know, he doesn't have the respect of Tudor yet. So Tudor needs to start popping him with something harder now. And, and start looking, zeroing in on a right hand. And they pop them jabs. Keep it easy with the one, two. Or maybe even go around the guard, just like that, like you did earlier with the hook. I mean, you go around the guard or, or go around the elbows, just like that. There you go, see? Whenever you got two tall fighters like that, that's a good punch to throw. There we go. And that can actually be converted into an uppercut where Ramos won't see that coming. Yeah, Ramos stop, stop, just looks like he's up, trying to land up, a haymaker, step back, hoping step to back. run into something. Step back, both of you. Yeah, I don't think Fuck. he's going to land a haymaker on Tudor. Tudor's you know, too good for that. Don't hold his head down. Ooh, nice shot right there. Short right hand by Eric Tudor. 
That was a clean short. He didn't pull that punch back at all. And that landed clean. He almost took it well. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. 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 Listen, sorry, listen. Sorry, bro, sorry. Let go, let go. Hey, don't push his head down, okay? Let's Both go. these fighters Fight. are ignoring the body right now. And that, that's, you know, that's what happens when you get two tall fighters that are almost six foot. You know, so I, I, I would like to see them start jabbing at least to the body, you know, and that's going to get the, the guard a little bit down, and then you can start get, getting the head shots and looping them around. Also change the angles that we're giving them, right? No, the, the angles, the look, the, the everything. You know, there you go. That, there's that right hand that Ramos attempted to go to the body. Just break, break the monotony of doing the exact same thing. There we Combinations go. Combinations hit from Tudor. Beautiful combination. One, three, four. And both of them went around the guard like I've been calling for by Tudor. You know, the straight shots are, you know, with tall fighters with long reaches, you know, they, they know those are the hard punches to land. But if you can go around the guard, those are more unexpected with, with taller, stop, 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 longer stop, reach stop, stop, fighters. Okay. Don't hit behind the head, okay? No, okay. okay? You okay? All right, let's go. Come on. I like to see Tudor throw a jab. To the chin, the, the chest, belt, and the belly. The belt. You know, the, you alternate the jab, and that could actually, no you know, whoa, 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 set up that right whoa, 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 hand that no he knockdown. just attempted. Hey, yeah. oh. Ramos slipped at the end of the round. Beautiful round. Damn, well, you fucking rocking him every time. Good fight so far. Let's not make it dirty. I don't want to get involved, okay? All right. Nice, clean right hand. There it is right there. I can't believe Ramos took that because he didn't even see that punch. See, he was getting pulled down. He came up. That was a blind shot. Clean shot by Eric Tudor. Ramos took it right on the chin. Knees didn't buckle. That tells you that Ramos can take a punch. Tudor fought twice beat. in 2023. My beat. One of the fights was against uh, Reggie Harris. See what the distance with him. Wipe that corner right there. Wipe that corner. There we go. See, now he's unleashing that right hand with a little bit more uh, you know, menace behind it. He needs to get the respect of, of, of Ramos, or Ramos is going to keep walking in like that. You know, see, you can see a nice little bounce in his step now. Yeah. He wants to get more eager, Ramos does. A little spark for Ramos. Now he's being first and attacking is Ramos, the Puerto Rican. Yeah, because if Tudor's not going to do nothing to get, you know, keep him off or get his respect, that's exactly what Luis Ramos needs to do. There's, there's nothing coming at you, so go on attack mode. See right there, Eric Tudor did the right thing. He, he fainted with his feet. He got on the inside. Stop, he didn't throw no punches. Up, up, I would love up, to have seen back. him throw one hard shot to the belly right there, to the to the bottom of Ramos right there to get the, the elbows tucked in and get him to freeze up. If you get your opponent to freeze up and start thinking about defense, that's when you can open up the headshots. What are they saying in the corner of Tudor, Brandy Flores? We'll check in with Brandy. I know she was over there talking to the corner of Tudor. There we go. See, look, those two jabs right there. He threw away, Eric Tudor threw away two jabs to the chest. But that's going to open up something else. Halfway through the fourth round, it's scheduled for eight, our co-feature. This is now the co-main because we've got to go to Nino Sandoval. His fight fell off. So chance for Tudor to get more exposure. Right hand from Tudor. All right, Brandy, one more time. Well, their corner's really liking what they're seeing from Tudor. They're saying he's boxing him really well, keep working that jab, and to just keep letting Ramos make the mistakes and to catch him hopefully on something here. Minute to go in the round. <laughs> Ramos just trying to load up on that right hand. Deflected by Tudor. I'd like to see Tudor throw lead, lead right hands. Uh, you know. Ramos keeping the left hand really low. He's been keeping that right hand, left hand low, and he doesn't have the the uh, the instinct to actually pull out in time. So a lead right hand will actually land by Tudor if he can throw it just right down the pipe. 
It doesn't, it doesn't seem like Luis Ramos has that fast twitch muscles, you know, to, to actually back up from a long shot. See that? He wasn't even able to pull back from that jab. So if, if Eric Tudor could time a straight right hand with no jab, I think he can land it cleanly on Ramos. Lorana Bell, our timekeeper, lets the us know the final seconds of the fourth round are upon us between Eric Tudor and Luis Ramos. This keeps doing exactly what you're doing. Huge night of boxing coming your way from Puerto Rico, Amanda Serrano. I love watching her fight. She headlines an event which will also feature Jake Paul on the card. That's March 2nd. Carolina is where Ramos is from. Did you say Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. There we go. There's all. Where is the R? I got a C in Spanish. Or the good friend Grisham would say Puerto Rico. Beth the Duran alongside Sergio Mora, the Latin State, former champion. We're watching Eric Tudor and Luis Ramos. Good round of action. Water. Still to come, Jojo Diaz in the main event. That's coming up next. Now, this is where, all right, Tudor, your last fight you lost. You got four underneath the belt. You're controlling this fight. What are you going to show? Oscar DeLoya right now. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. And normally, I, I like to say, you know, put it on cruise control. Let's get this win and go on to the next one. No, no, I, I agree with you here, Beto. I think he should show out a little bit. You know, uh, whenever you have a fighter like, like Ramos, you have the speed advantage. You have, you have, you're, you're the more polished boxer. You have the technique. So you can take some chances with a fighter like Ramos. And I think that's what he should do in this round. And you still got three rounds to work. You know, put it on another, on another, another gear. If you're Eric Tudor. The power punches on the side of Tudor. Work out of it, guys. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Well, Ramos is game, stop, but doesn't stop, 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 get the sense stop, that Ramos stop. has that hey, don't go the power that he's going to hurt you with anything. Watch the hold. He doesn't throw anything like that. Well, he's, he's a strong puncher, but he doesn't have uh, power behind with speed. You know, he doesn't have he doesn't have the speed of the technique, but he does have strong hands. You know, you see, he, he has heavy hands. But Tudor's too polished for that. You know, you gotta, you gotta catch him off guard or trick him into landing something. Guys, hands are free. Let him go. And you ain't gonna do that, but just Stop. slinging don't haymakers. Punch, don't punch. Step back. Let's go. Fuck. Tudor's too good for that. See, I, I like that. I like Ronald landing the body now. You know, if you're not gonna land anything upstairs, you can't time him right. You know, just. Bang away at the lower body. You know, that's going to actually let go. Let you know, get Tudor to try to block and counter and open him up upstairs. So Ramos should just concentrate on the, on the midsection of Tudor now. Approach a minute to go in the round. Eric Tudor. He's hit with an uppercut. Lands with a hook. Probably the best shot of the night for Ramos. He's able to split the guard finally. Yeah, I like to throw that uppercut again. I mean, there's, there's an opening there. As Tudor's fighting on the inside and, and, and staying in the pocket. Now Tudor moving Ramos back. Uppercut from Tudor, overhand right from Tudor. And here's the other gear we're talking about, Bethel. Tudor's putting it, forget about cruise control, putting it in another gear, coming around the guard, left and right. And don't forget the uppercut. There's an there's a avenue down the middle to land an uppercut on Luis Ramos, but if you can actually flurry around the guard and then come up the middle with an uppercut, I think it will land. Another solid round for Eric Tudor, a Romanian now living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. There we go. See that? That's what I want to see, that flurry around the guard and then clean it up with an uppercut down the middle. Down with five. Beautiful fucking round, dude. He just... This next round, you'll get him, bro. Come on. Just keep doing what you're doing. Listen, I'm telling you, try to hey, put the... Watch your okay? Watch your Try to put the left hook behind somebody. Guys, it's a little bit of one, right? Can I need to go here? Let me get in the body, right? 
And this is a long right hand, look. It, went, it was a glancing right punch, but that one landed because you saw that Ramos pulled his head back. And from there, you saw Tudor come around the guard. These, I love these shots. Those are hooks. You know, left and right shots. I think those are landing better than the straight shots because both these guys are tall fighters at six feet, so I think they're not accustomed to getting hit with hooks. They're accustomed to hit, getting hit with straight punches. So it'll serve Tudor well if he can actually go around the guard and start hooking. Just like that. Just like that. Uh huh. Because he he knows he got the feeling for it now. You know, Ramos is not, you know, evading those stop, punches stop, without stop, the body movement. Just keeping punch, that guard up. So as long as you punch. you have something to hit there, you're gonna penetrate those gloves and 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 land points. There we go. There's a combination you're asking That's for. That's exactly what I would do if I was Tudor right there. I'll just shoe shine away at that guard. You said there's an uppercut available. There's an uppercut available as long as you. You know, shoe shine on upstairs and then come up right up the middle. It could be a left or a right. There's something there. Overhand right from Tudor. Controlling this fight. Tudor in black. There's an uppercut. He tried it there, but he didn't try to hide it or, or try to mask it with the. With, he went with it first. Yeah, he went with it first. It's very hard. It's, it's really hard to land an uppercut when it's the first punch thrown. You gotta. It's probably the most difficult punch to land for a boxer. You gotta hide that punch. So shoe shine uppercut, that's what you're calling? That's what you want? And, and you know what? That, that's an unorthodox combination, but I think Tudor's go, go, uh, you know, gifted right enough to, to throw a shot like that. Oh, He's showing it. Hey, nice and back. Ramos is definitely back, there. Okay? It takes athleticism oh, to throw, you know, shoe shine combinations and end it with an uppercut. But Tudor's athletic enough to get, get away with it. Why do you see the opening for the uppercut? Well, you could see the elbows out. I mean, look at, look at how... Look at the, the upper body of Ramos. He has a strong upper body, but his elbows are always out. So look at how he covers himself, and, and down the middle, the elbows are out. Or like, or like you said, right the, there, or like you said the chicken wing. The wing out there. Stop. Don't punch. Come on, guys. Keep it clean. Fuck. See right there. It's a perfect example. Ramos threw a sloppy right hand, and Let everything go. down Step the middle free, was open. They served two to right to play Step a little back. possum, and let okay, Ramos get a little bit overconfident, throw a looping shot again, just to land something clean down the middle. Preferably a right uppercut. Tudor setting up an overhand right. You know, he's throwing he's throwing away those jabs downstairs. Just to go with a looping over the over the guard. There it is right there. Good job, Sergio Mora. You see that coming. Well yeah, I mean it's 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 one of those punches that you know every boxer knows. You know, it's one of the first sneaky punches you learn. You know, throw a shot downstairs, throw it away, get your opponent to start baiting and blocking, and then come over the top. We call it the club punch on the streets too, Bethel. The club? The club punch. But I'm telling you, if you put the left hook behind some of these right hands, you'll flatline them. You know what I mean? You box him beautiful, you're making him miss, you're owning him. If you Yeah, I'm gonna keep going to the body. Forget the forget about the head, go to the body. Need some water. Boy. Brandy Flores with the Tudor family, not the one in the ring. They wouldn't watch him. Yeah, well, the Tudor brothers, not the biggest talkers. However, when Eric was coming off his first loss as a professional, he said that he and his brother were just there for each other. They don't speak to each other very much without uplifting words, but they're always in. They're always with each other, always supporting one another. And he said that his brother, Sasha, was there for him, and now they're fighting on the same card on Golden Boy Fight Night. Sasha in his pro debut at a rugged one against Osai, yes. Gonzalez split draw. We're here in the seventh round. Work out of it. Work out of it. Back up, Eric. Back up. Hands to free. So 
when you bounce back after a loss, it's how you win. Eric Tudor, himself a new trainer, or, or new old trainer, went back to his amateur coach. Stop, stop, stop. Let him up, let him up, let him up. And Jeff back, Poritz. He's good. You can tell he's worked on some things. Let him go, Eric. Let him go, Eric. You've got his arm, Eric. Go to come the main event, Jojo stop, Diaz stop, Jr. Stop, against stop, Ricky stop, Perez, stop, our new one, Eric, our new up, main up. event. <laughs> uh, here on Golden Boy Fight Night. Over 200 amateur fights for Tudor. He's been growing up in the boxing scene for a while. Fights in Florida, Texas, Mexico, Massachusetts, Nevada. Signed a Golden Boy early last year. They haven't been very really soft touches. Most of his opponents have had winning records. Oh, and he got shot by well, Ramos. He timed Tudor with that shot. Yeah. As he landed, he got caught with one. That's a right hand from Tudor. I'm surprised Tudor got hit with that shot. I mean, he, that, 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 that punch was telegraphed by Ramos. And you can see that Ramos is not looking to win rounds. He's just looking to land one big punch. So Tudor should actually, go, Eric. Go, you know, be, Step back, Eric. Stop. be leery of that. You're not, you're, you're not going to get outworked. You're all, you know, Ramos is just looking for one shot. He's been looking for one shot since the fight started. Yeah, you know, fighters like that are easy to beat. You just pop them, you know, win the rounds, you know, try to sneak in a power shot here and there. Just don't mix Watch it up with him. You know, you're in control. Tudor is in control. Don't give him that, that haymaker to land. Has Ramos put together many combinations tonight? Not really. Nope. But every now and then he's sneaking a solid shot. The only time he lands something big is when Tudor gets lazy and lets him. And he gets a little bit too uh, content. Good body shots there by Tudor. Those surprise Ramos. Ramos didn't like those body shots. You were asking for body shots in the second and third round. We're finally seeing him here in the end of the seventh. Yeah, that's going to land the big shots upstairs that Tudor's been finally looking for. Got to do it for seven. The body shots is the, the hey, thing that brought the arm yeah. down and landed the, the head shot that closed that round strong for Eric okay. Tudor. Hey, how do you feel? Are you sure? You feel good? All right, calm down. Get some water. That slapped. Jeez. You remember? Felix Trinidad yeah. slap him in the corner. It's a Puerto Rican thing. You just you just open up on him, bro, and you will get him out of here. I promise you. Just put something behind that right hand when you let it go, and, and it's over. He don't want to be in here with you no more. He's looking for an excuse. Okay. Look, Tudor going around the guard. He forgot about the straight punches. You know, he went down to the body in there. Nice long right hook, but no body shots. See, the body shots is what started the onslaught earlier. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, just the eighth and final round. Eighth and final round in our co-feature, Eric Tudor controlling this fight. His corner telling him, let it go, you can get him out. And the way he closed the seventh round, more of that. Finally going to the body like you asked earlier in the fight. Yep, look, see there's that shoe shine. That's gonna work, work perfectly, but why don't you soften them up downstairs? Even if they're just jabs, just get the guard down, get the elbows okay. down of Ramos okay. to concentrate on blocking body shots and you can go around the guard and look like, you know, get the shoe shine. Judges go, love that, go, you know, the crowd loves that. There it is right there. You can put those together, four, five, six, yeah, seven of those. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Stop, stop. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> Robbo's gonna make it rough. Okay, Tudor's trainer told him he's, not, he's trying to do anything to get out of there. Here's our co-main tonight. Golden Boy Fight Night. Stop, the, step back, don't this, punch, don't punch. Camarón Cepeda, Maxi Hughes in Las Vegas, March 16th. 
Got Ryan and Devin Haney, April 20th. Golden Boy picking up the action here early in the year. Ryan's all about giving the young prospects an opportunity to get shine on the zone. Opportunity to get exposure. There's that left hook that they were asking for by Tudor. I would love to see a, a left hook upstairs and then a hard left hook to the body or touch him to the body and go upstairs. You know, alternate your left hooks. I think one of them is bound. There you go. See that? That's the shot I want to see. Beautiful shot by Tudor. Touch him upstairs. Got the elbow up just to land that body shot. This fight a little tougher than it needed to be for Tudor? No, I think it was it was right. I, it's a nice it was a nice matchup. You know, get rounds, kind of get some rounds. And a st strong fighter. You know, you're dealing with a fighter with you know six one six knockout. So you still have to be on your, uh, your defense. But yeah, he's letting his hands go. He's confident. There's some shoe shining moments. I think he's having a good performance. Good bounce back win by Eric Tudor. First fight of the year for Eric Tudor. Solid one as the fight winds down. Control this fight from the opening bell against Luis Ramos. And looks like Eric Tudor is on his way to a victory as we're done with eight and the fight is over. Right back on the winning column. That's how you want to start off the new year. Look at this. Go to the boy fight night, giving prospects an opportunity to get some exposure. Hey, if you lose, it doesn't mean anything. You just, you're going to come back. And what are you going to show us? You got to perform. What are you going to do? Well, tonight, Eric Tudor looked good. It's about how you react after a loss. Control the fight. Did some things. First time with his amateur coach now as a professional. So they can go back and work on some things. And Luis Ramos, a game fighter from Puerto Rico. The Tudor not jumping up and down. Crazy celebration. We will be celebrating April 20th. Something's going to go on. Heck, just leading up to that fight. The blockbuster fight as Devin Haney defends his world title. An unbeaten record against Ryan Garcia in Las Vegas. Make sure you follow the Golden Boy socials. There's a lot of details coming out about tickets. Venue. Still haven't set a venue. What's going on? Heck, just follow their tw Twitter account. They go back and forth like no other. Uh, that fight should be in Vegas. I mean, it's a it's a very popular fight between two top fighters at 140. Uh, oh, yeah. I would love to see in the bright lights of Las Vegas. Tudor gets a round of applause from the crowd. Joe Martinez, our ring announcer, walking into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds, we go into the scorecards, and all three judges score it. 80-72 for your winner by unanimous decision, Eric Tudor! for the victory for Eric Tudor. Well, Did highlights are mostly all Eric Tudor here, but, you know, it was a nice bounce back win for him. I mean, he, he was bouncing on his toes, looking for nice, clean right hands, setting him up behind that long jab. But once he started letting the speed take control and going around the guard, that's not only when he started getting the, uh, the crowd into it, but that's when he started feeling it a lot more. You know, he started shoe shining. Those shots aren't meant to really knock out opponents. They're meant to keep your opponents hurt and rock and bobbing around. So I think Tudor started catching on to that. And yeah, he had a tough opponent in front of him. You know, this guy wasn't going anywhere. He has a, a puncher's chance. He wanted to make this fight, you know, ugly and dirty. But credit to Tudor. Kept it polished, kept it clean. Got the W and on to the next one. That's what matters as we look at the final comp you box punch stance. All on the side of Eric Tudor. Ramos was trying to land some of the big ones. Never could. 
So a good win for Eric Tudor. All right, so far tonight, it started with a draw. We had a KO. Back-to-back -back decisions. What are we going to get in the main event? JoJo Diaz still to come in L.A. Well, it's time for Golden Boy Fight Night's first main event of the year. It's JoJo. What he does best is combination punches, left and right, hooks. A lot of rain early in the week. Not anymore. Tonight, a beautiful night in L.A. We're at the Commerce Casino and Hotel where Jojo Diaz will take on Jesus Ricky Perez in a 10-round fight at Super Lightweight. Jojo is looking to get back on track with a second consecutive win. Once a champion at Super Featherweight, problems in and out of the ring have slowed his career. He's lost three of his last four, but now the SoCal native is looking to prove he's back to his winning ways. He said he has the right attitude and the right mindset for tonight. For Ricky Perez, a construction worker from San Diego and Tijuana, a victory tonight would be the biggest of his career. In fact, this is the biggest fight of his career, he said. He would love nothing more than to slam the doors on anything that Jojo Diaz is thinking about in the boxing world. Golden Boy Fight Night. Ringside here, Bethel Duran alongside the former champion. Commentator extraordinaire, the Latin Snake, Sergio Mora. And Sergio, we've talked about Jojo. You've known him for a long time. I've known since he was an amateur. We like the kid, great kid, but the issues that he's had out of the ring, a lot of fighters have had that where you make money, you become a champ, and everybody's there for you, but he lost his focus. And listen, it happened to me too. It happens to a lot of, you know, champions. Whenever you get that top level, that's what you work your entire life. I mean, Jojo Diaz was a 2012 U.S. Olympian. Yeah. He became a champion. So his dreams came true. Everything that he's been working on since he was eight years old, finally he becomes the man. So he wanted to enjoy the fruits of his labor, but he enjoyed them a little bit too much, got in trouble, and now he's going back to where he belongs. Like the Beatles song, Jojo needs to get back to where he belongs. So look, tonight he's in there with a fighter in Perez, who he's supposed to be, but Perez, he's no walk in the park, man. This is a guy who's only lost to undefeated fighters, unbeaten, unblemished fighters, good fighters. So Jojo's gonna have it tough, because he's, he's in great shape, and look, the Peta threw 1,500 punches against Jojo Diaz, but when it comes to Perez against the Peta, he gave him, he, it's a similar style matchup as far as aggression. So Jojo's gonna have his hands full. The discipline wasn't there for Jojo the last couple of years, and you, know, you have the jokes, we all saw him. Well, Jojo make weight. Well, this one was contracted at 139. He came in at 138. He looks good, and he sounded like he's locked in. The distractions are gone. But Sergio, if he, loses tonight he's thinking about you know going and fighting for a championship but if he loses that's nowhere near a possibility for him uh, look i'm gonna call it like it is if jojo diaz you know loses tonight against perez i think that'll be the end of jojo diaz i don't think he'll get to the mountaintop you can't lose against fighters against perez they're tough fighters but you're supposed to beat them when you're a former champion when you have the accolades you have the pedigree of a jojo diaz you're supposed to beat guys like this and move on to the next one 
but he's going to have his end. So I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a slug fest. I could see it right now. Perez is in great shape. Jojo, no matter how determined he is, you know, and the weight doesn't lie. 137 and a half, he's ready for this fight. The Styles make fights, get ready for this one. So Perez last year fought Alexis Rocha at 47. Most of his career have been 47 fights. You said, why? I'm a construction worker. Brick layer. I don't have time to be a full-time fighter, so I was taking fights at 47 because I had family to feed. Finally able to train full-time for this one, and he's down at 37. He said, my future's at 35. I've been fighting guys that were way bigger than me. They were rehydrating. I had no business being in the ring with them. Tonight can change my life when you have an attitude like that, when nothing's been handed to you. This is dangerous for JoJo. It's definitely dangerous. I mean, fighters from Mexico, this is the opportunity they wait for. They wait for that phone call, and then when they get it, they make the best of it. And this is an opportunity of a lifetime for Perez. Perez has been in there with, with solid fighters, like Alexis Rocha took him distance. You know, he got a few licks in right there, but Rocha, another strong southpaw like, like JoJo Diaz, has size and more power. And this is what Perez was able to do against him. Back up a stronger southpaw against Jojo Diaz, he's not going to have that size. He's not going to have that power that Rocha has. So he's going to have a smaller left-handed fighter in Jojo Diaz. And I think, you know, it's a, it's a great style matchup. And Perez, you know, he's strong enough to get the respect of Jojo Diaz tonight. I'm curious to see how Jojo takes that power. Hey, Golden the Boy fight night is about giving prospects an opportunity to shine during the week. Jojo Diaz shouldn't be here. Golden Boy stayed by his side, backed him up and said, okay, if you want to get to the Saturday big fights, show us what you got tonight. And it's a lot on the line. It's been a rough couple years for Jojo as we've talked about. Three straight losses in over a year and a half. Haney, Camarón, Mercito Hesta, problems outside of the ring, questioning what he should be doing, his love for the sport. However, Jojo managed to find his way out of the darkness. Yesterday at the fighter meetings, he said he's going into tonight's fight knowing that a dominating performance could put him back into the mix in the boxing world. I truly believe that God is, uh, you know, working uh, mysteriously and, and great in, in my life. And I'm very, very thankful for, you know, all the adversity I've been through, all the ups and downs. Uh, I'm thankful for everything because if I wouldn't have gone through all those trials and tribulations, I wouldn't be as knowledgeable as I am now and as focused as I am now to, you know, prove to everybody that I am one of the best in, in the world. And come February 15th, it's going to show me. During my whole amateur career, I wanted to be a pro fighter. Seeing Oscar De La Hoya, seeing Floyd Mayweather fight, Manny Pacquiao, fighting in Las Vegas, selling out arenas, man. That was my, my ultimate goal was to, you know, to one day reach that type of uh, level of uh, professionalism in the boxing game. I already knew that I had uh, I had what it took. Um, I, I had Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar De La Hoya, believing me as well. Uh, they got me a good contract where they kept me really busy and active uh, in my in my career. And uh, it's not like I was fighting scrub, scrubs that I was just knocking out in the first round, man. I, I really, you know, paved my way in the boxing game by fighting tough opposition right from the jump, man. I fought a lot of undefeated fighters. Uh, just my record was, wasn't was padded like some of these fighters are. Going into the Tevin Farmer fight, I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Uh, Tevin Farmer, he was uh, a guy that already defended his title, I believe, four to, four to five times. I, actually, my fight was going to be his fifth title defense. But he's never fought a guy that was aggressive like me and that applied pressure, but applied pressure with really, really direct skill. And once I got that hand raise and once I beat that Tevin Farmer, man, it was it was a dream come true. It was something that, you know, I always wished for. And it, it was something I prayed for, not only for myself, but for my family, for my dad and for my mom, for everybody that has been supporting me and for all my fans as well. It was a very special moment for my career. From the new world champion, Jojo Diaz. I was living the, the rock star life, you could say, man. After winning something that I've trained for my whole entire life, it was kind of like just a relief off my back. I didn't have anything 
I didn't have anything to look forward to because I felt like I already accomplished accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. So defending my title, trying to defend my title 130 pounds after, you know, COVID hit. And uh, I was weighing like 178 seven weeks before the camp. I ended up dropping down to like 133, but my body just shut down. Jojo Diaz came in three and a half pounds overweight. Per California rules, if you're more than two pounds over, you are not allowed to try to make the weight again. I was very, very devastated, not only for myself, but for my family, for everybody that has been believing in me. It was just, you know, a, 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 I felt like a failure. When I was at my darkest time, man, I was thinking about a lot of crazy shit, dude. Um, suicide, you know, thinking about not living anymore, thinking about just giving up, uh, doing a lot of, you know, drugs, drinking a lot of alcohol. Just felt like giving up, man. And uh, when you're at that point in, in life, uh, you, you feel like the whole world is just against you and everything is just crumbling down on you. Seeing a lot of people, you know, give up on me and lose hope on me and uh, seeing everybody come in, say, inside my life and then leave outside of my life and then trying to come back in and stuff. I'll, I'm thankful that I was able to see that, but having my father there through it all, man, really means a lot and I'm very, very fortunate, especially with my son, man. I don't see him as much anymore and it's it's very, uh, you know, gets I get very emotional about it because I love my son with all my heart and uh, just be the best person I possibly can for him, man, because Life gets hard, man. Life gets hard, and I know that he's going to be going through uh, a lot of struggles in life as well. But if he has that, you know, positive mind mindset and that, you know, that influence, that person that that went through all those stuff and that has made it out of that and that could teach him all the knowledgeable things, that's what really means a lot to me. And I'm I'm re I'm willing to do that, and I'm going to do that for him. Bye. Bye. Love you. Cheers from okay? All my losses, man, I I take them as learning and experiences because I know that uh, that was those those losses that I did lose, that wasn't the best Joseph Diaz. Uh, I, I lost those fights because of myself, because of, you know, me, my mental, you know, not really being there and uh, just letting all the outside distractions get to me. Yes, it's about how I win, but it's also about showing everybody that I'm back disciplined and uh, I'm not going to be missing weight anymore. I want to showcase to everybody, man, that I ain't around anymore, man. I want to prove to myself, and only myself, but to everybody, dude, that I'm back serious. Tail of the tape for our main event, Jojo Diaz, Jesus Perez. Pretty similar, Sergio. Very similar, but this is going to be a difficult fight, man. I'm telling you right now, Jojo's going to have to get the respect of the heavy hands of Perez. And Perez, I mean, this is a Cinderella story for him. You know, part-time boxer, part-time construction worker, got the phone call to face a former champion. You can bet he's going to show out tonight. Joe Martinez ready to make this place rock. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived to the main event of the evening. Ten rounds scheduled in the super lightweight division. And first to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner from Tijuana, Mexico, Jesus Perez. Biggest fight of his career, Sergio Mora. And he's walking in. A big smile. The first time we've seen him smile because he's been locked in poker face earlier. Yeah, and look, he, a dangerous man right there. He's in great shape. Opportunity of a lifetime. He's had the same expression, you're right, on his face. But now, this is what he does best. He loves to fight. This is a man with power in his hands. So the smile is just he's excited to get in there and show out. I mean, this is a big opportunity for Jesus Perez to beat a former champion and a former U.S. Olympian in Jojo Diaz. Yeah. Lost to Alexis Rocha and also Brian Norman, a nice young fighter. He'd be a great feather in his hat on his sombrero. Ah, if Perez, if Perez could beat Diaz tonight and and shock the plans of not only Diaz but Golden Boy, you know, and bringing him back. So yeah, this is this is a, a, a perfect moment moment for Jesus Perez to shock the world.
Rain Magazine keys to victory for Perez. The first one, apply steady pressure. The second, make it physical. And the third, punch and combinations. Nice and simple. That's Mexican style for you. And this is a man that's really strong. I mean, he's five foot six, but he weighed over 200 pounds. Yeah. You know, so he's, he's a sturdy, strong, hey, short fighter. Playing to the ring, fighting into the red corner. The former two-time, two-division world champion from South El Monte, California, Jojo Diaz Jr. Jojo Diaz. 2012 Olympian had everything going his right way. Then crash out. You know, they believe your own height. Start going the wrong way. Now at the age of 31, with a lot against him, said he has a new focus, a new approach. Gone are the days of partying with friends, spending crazy money. Then go back to church. Hasn't had a drink in 70 days, keeping track of what's going on. A better relationship with his family. There you see baby Zenith gets a kid from dad. But what are you going to do in the ring? You can talk about it, but are you going to be about it? And we'll see it here tonight in the main event on Golden Boy Fight Night. The dude sells. Alamonte showed up. And let's look at the keys to victory brought to you by The Ring Magazine. Work the busy jab. Control the distance. And number three, tap the body. He looks good. Looks and good now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Live around the world on the zone from Commerce Casino here in Commerce, California. This is the main event. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in the super lightweight division. It is brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. This bout in association with Paco Presents. Sponsored by Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the executive officer Andy Foster with chairman Pete Villegas. The three judges scoring at ringside, Tiffany Clinton, Hall of Famer Dr. Lou Moret, and Zachary Young. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Thomas Taylor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, the fighters are ready, the boxing world is ready. Commerce, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing blue trunks trimmed in silver, he weighed in officially 138 and one quarter pounds. In 29 professional fights, his record, 24 victories, including 18 knockouts, just five defeats, desde Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, here is Jesus Ricky. And across the ring, his opponent fighting into the red corner. Wearing black and red, he weighed it officially 137 and one half pounds. In 38 bouts, his record stands at 33 victories. Just four defeats, one draw with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Presenting the former WBC light world champion, former IBF super featherweight champion of the world. He is the fighting pride of South El Monte, California. Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. Get out of the way. Back up. Chief second. Okay, guys, on both sides, we're going full waistband, full waistband. You got my instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times. Listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to your corner, gentlemen. Tom Taylor, the third man in the ring. We're ready for.
for our main event is Jojo kisses his dad slash trainer, Joseph Sr. Had a rocky relationship the last couple years. Ricky Perez just trying to wait for an opportunity. Jojo and his dad butted heads because the dad said I had to kick him out of the gym because he wasn't disciplined. He wasn't focused. As I said, the, the boxing is the best camp they've had in a long time. Will it translate into the fight? As Jojo Diaz tries to get his career back on track. Jojo, the southpaw. Perez, the stocky, slightly shorter orthodox fighter. Both these guys you know, are clever fighters in their own way. Perez has heavier hands and more power. And when he lands, he hurts. You know, Diaz is more of a volume puncher. He's, he's a master at closing the distance, too, you know, so he doesn't rely on speed or power. His timing is his gift. Jojo was scheduled to fight on the Giovanni Santillana Alexis Rocha undercard in October. That did not happen, so he's been out of the ring for 222 days. And Jojo's been staying active, you know, his last fight here, you know, not too long ago, so... Staying active, staying busy, and that's what you want to see with a with a former champion like Diaz. Body shots is what get those makes up. Get those up. Jojo Diaz special. You know, a, a volume you, punching him. and body shots. And once he starts landing those, that's when the, the, the fight turns in his direction. And like I said, he's not a power puncher. He doesn't knock him out. But he gets your respect with those body shots. It's not the power puncher with Jojo wearing that Everglass, Everlast gloves, where Ricky Perez using the Clitho Ray is known as the puncher Punches gloves. Glove. See how that plays out. Ooh, short right hand there by and Perez. Perez. attacking right away. Yeah, Perez, you know, sneaky with that short little right hand. And you can see he has the, the harder punches. Even when he misses, you can see he has the heavier hands. This is the lightest that Perez has ever fought at 137. Because he's been at 140, 147, and so just because I couldn't make the 35, because I couldn't have the discipline to get up at 4 in the morning to go train and work and cut. He goes, you try laying bricks as you're starving yourself trying that, to get to That's make. the thing, man. You can't be on the top level being a part-time fighter and having a full-time job. You know, so for this fight, he said he had a full two months to prepare solely and concentrate on Jojo Diaz. So he's in the best shape of his life, and you could see it in his physique. And confidence, you know, Perez is ready for this one. Yeah, definitely the confidence for Perez. But he respects Jojo, but not too much. This one's scheduled for 10 rounds. The entire crowd here for Jojo. About 10 minutes away from where he grew up in South Carolina. Nice body shot by Jojo, but Listen look, Perez did, did the smart thing. Come right back with four, five, six punches. Not let Jojo Time right there. have that round for the momentum swing in his direction. This is game. Yes. Yeah, but you got to be a little more busy. I know. Right? You got to, that, was a good, that was a good round for you. Okay? Yeah. That was a good round for you, okay? But you got to, you got to get a little more busy. I know. You got to be standing in front of him, right? I know. I know. He's, he's trying to reach with that left hand. Rinse first. Rinse your mouth. Where's the bucket at? Drink. Drink it. Listen to me. He's reaching. Get us a vuelta? Okay. More water? No. Come on. Take a deep breath. Work hard. Look for one, two. Don't fall off balance. I want you to aim at the, aim at the chest. Aim at the head. Then go back downstairs. Let's go. Work downstairs. All the way back. Number two. Number two. Jojo Diaz said he was on weight the day before the weigh-in. So on Tuesday, he said he was at the 139 limit. He came in at 138. And that's a rarity for Jojo yeah. Diaz, who's had a lot of struggles, you know, making weight. And on the scales, losing his title, you know, on the scales. That loss set to Rocky Ma. Remember working that fight, and you know, we talked to him, and... So, Joji, you lost your bill on the scale. He's like, eh, whatever. I still fought. Like, he just wasn't in the right mindset. To beat Javier Fortuna, then 
Off the three in a row. You can see both these guys wanting to get respect of one another. Now they're, they're putting a lot more power behind their punches. Both of them exchanged to the body as well, which is a good game plan by Perez because, like I said earlier, Diaz is known for his good body shots, but Perez wants to get the respect downstairs as well. Perez wakes up at four. Good, good uppercut there by Perez. Running at 430 on the job side at six. Six to four at the gym at 430. All that for one day, hoping for an opportunity. Here he has it tonight. What are you going to do when you get your shot? Both these guys are throwing smart yeah. combinations. Uppercuts, hooks, not smothering the shots, not ignoring the body. It's like they're evenly matched. The physique and the muscular upper body is more on Jesus Perez, but, you know, the, the, the bounce on the feet and the range is more on Diaz. Perez was sparring Randabelle. Giovanni Santillan yeah. for this one. Monster, man. I mean, we call that fight with Rocha, and yeah. Santillan got all my respect. Body shot for Jojo. Perez answers with a one-two. Yeah, look at the body shots. I'm telling you. Take it to the body of Perez. This is the thing about Diaz. He's known for good body shots. He's known to close the distance. He bangs on both sides. Anytime Diaz is running something, Perez is going right back downstairs, getting the respect. Perez he's just using that right hand. Yeah, but over and over. But he's putting a lot behind that right hand. So whether Jojo blocks it or not, Jojo's still feeling the impact of it. You can see the heavier hands are on Perez. You know, Jojo relies on timing and volume, but the power is definitely not on his side. Jojo with a body shot of his own. Look at how calm Diaz is under pressure. You know, no matter what's coming at him. You know, he has the same poker facing, always looking for counters, always looking to land something back. Look at just like that. That's a, that's a calm, experienced veteran in Jojo Diaz. And they're done that. Into the top of the mountain, trying to get back. Final seconds of the second round. Close round. Close round, good round. Both men have their moments. This is a fight I'm going to expect tonight. This is going to be a good one. Golden Boy Fight Night, the main event in Commerce, California. For more on the background of Perez, here's Brandy Flores. Yeah, Perez took quite a long layoff during the pandemic. In 2020, he weighed 200 pounds, but lots of people gained weight during the pandemic. Well, since then, obviously, you see him jumping around the ring. He weighed in at 138. He wasn't fighting back then, but now he knows he JoJo needs to win for his career, and he's excited and ready to compete and be that roadblock in JoJo's way. In 2020, Perez was not fighting at all. He was just working. I need you to get a rhythm. You can't just throw your punches. Combination punching with rhythm. Two hundred pounds now down to this chiseled body. Yeah, that's impressive. I've been retired a few years now. I can't gain weight. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> nice short punches right there by Jojo. He's not loading up, just letting the 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 power stop, 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 that stop, stop, Perez no is punch. bringing to the table. You need you need some halfway yeah. with a check hook. That's that's a veteran veteran moves by Diaz. He's not he's not loading up. He's using the 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 momentum of Perez's power to his advantage. And Jojo the effective puncher, Perez the active puncher, according to the copy box. A body shot from Jojo. Very nice. Oh, I love that body shot. I and mean, back to the other side. Touch both sides of the body. Keep Perez. Perez looking for the body shot then you can come over the top with the sh with the looping shots just smart patient game plan by jojo diaz and look just like that looks like the game plan for better is just go to the body go to the body and then go upstairs more oh, body work from Perez. two good body shots there by perez one landing cleanly Kick from Jojo, last flush. Perez answers. 
They're just going to stand in the middle and trade. Very yeah. nice. Both these fighters are throwing the exact same punches, even though one's a softball and one's orthodox. It looks like they're fighting in the mirror. And Perez is not going to back away. He's going to stand there, head snap back. Left hook by Jojo. Left by Jojo again. Beautiful body shots there by Jojo Diaz. Bending those knees, torquing them hips. Landing cleanly on Perez. A minute to go in the third. Action picking up. Jojo with a body shot of his own. I like that straight left hand by Jojo Diaz. Every time he goes down to the body, he pecks him with that left hand. No jab, just straight left hand. That's going to set up a right hook afterwards. Love that jab to the body right there. Jojo's looking sharp. Yeah. On his toes, bouncing around. Yeah, he's looking nice. He's looking for the big shots, but he's setting up the big shots by pecking him upstairs and downstairs with those jabs. See that? Good action. Good Listen, action in our main event. Exactly what we expected from Diaz and Perez. They're on Golden Boy Fight Night in L.A. Time right there. Good job. You're not listening to me. He's too comfortable. He's, he's fighting way too relaxed. You need to make him regret what he's doing. And look at these body shots by Perez right there. That one right on the bell line. It's all good because look, those shots right there, those are legal shots, even though they're on their bat line. Good body shots by Perez, but look, back down to Jojo Diaz. He gets a low blow under there, but Perez not complaining. Action is heating up here. Let's go, guys. Got to go. Jojo, number four, all the way back for me. All the way back. Schedule for 10, our main event. Joseph Diaz Jr., his last fight was against Jerry Perez last July, a fight that Jojo said he was not ready for, he wasn't training for, he was drinking during camp, nothing was right about it. But tonight, it's different, and he looks different. He's effective with his punches, landing over 52% of the power punches through three. This is what had people excited about Jojo when he was disciplined and locked in when he fought Terran Farmer. Ricky Perez for Tijuana is not <laughs> going to go anywhere. The body shots there by Perez touching both sides of the body. Yeah, we can see that over and over and over since the beginning bell. He's been just going to the body for Jojo, then he'll go upstairs, a combination like that. Oh, I see, but so Perez is loading up on that right hand, but he's touching him upstairs. Perez is just not a slugger, man. He's a clever slugger. Well, I like that clever slugger. Let's hear what they're saying in the corner of JoJo. Yeah, his dad, trainer, Joseph Diaz, likes what he's seeing from JoJo. He said his defense is pretty good, but they're waiting to hoping catch Perez, shout stretching, and then counter it and land that knockout shot that they're trying to make it a statement tonight. Looking for a knockout shot. Okay. I've never heard that from uh, Team Diaz. You know, he's not the puncher. He's not the, the guy that's supposed to be knocking out fighters. He breaks down fighters. He outclasses fighters. He beats them down to the body. But they look for the knockout. Uh, I, I'm not sure you're going to be able to do that against a fighter who's never been knocked out in Perez. And you're trying to make a statement. It's one thing to make a statement, but a knockout, okay. If that's what you feel like you have in your arsenal tonight. I don't, I don't Let's see, see it. if it happens. I don't see it coming. I mean, Perez is a tough cookie, man, and he's never been stopped. Came in shape, muscular, takes a big shot. Jojo should just concentrate on, on putting his punches together, putting the combinations together, not getting cut, and moving on to the next one. Yeah, his losses against Ruslan Maria, that was a tough one at the Hub. Carlos Diaz, who was 26-1. Danielito Zorrilla, who was a hot prospect at the time. Alexis Rocha and Brian Norman. All fighters are good. Ah, uppercut from Tijuana. Oh, there you go. 
Those are six unanswered punches. But finally, Joseph's coming back. But this is Perez's fight right here. Letting them hands go. Throwing the power with precision. Nice and compact. Perez just standing there like, I'm inviting Jojo to throw the power in shots. Yeah, he's not respecting uh, Jojo's power. He's punching, him he's punching in between the shots of Jojo, which is smart as well. Okay? Jojo can't get comfortable throwing punk combinations. Big round for Perez here. Huge round for Ricky Perez. The arena boxing in San Diego right where he trains. Guys, the man in the arena right now. There you go. That's how you need to fight. Come on, get some air. Girl, that's exactly how I want to see him fight. Don't let him control you. You're dominating him. Okay, okay, okay. Look at these uppercuts. Going down to the body. Borderline coming up says three, four, five, six. That's a very difficult thing to do for, to, to throw that many uppercuts. That takes athleticism and footwork. Perez is more than just a slugger, man. I'm telling you right now, he's an athletic and clever slugger. Joe Vargas, the Arena Box in San Diego, doing good work with Jesus Ricky Perez. There's a conversation in the corner of Diaz, and in Perez, it's more of direction. And that's it, instructions. As it should be. I mean, in the corner, you want to keep it concise. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to use too many words. Just get your direct, get your directions across with as limited uh, words as possible. Fifth round. Sorry. Accidental clash of heads. Oh, heads. That is stopped. Jojo kept going. Yeah, and you know what? Tom Taylor let him go. Jojo doing the right thing. Look, oh, look protect yourself, gonna, right? Tom Taylor's not going to say nothing. Guess what? I'm going to respond with punches. Oh, there's no cut. There was a clash, but no cut. See Jojo breathing heavy in this fifth round already. Taking those deep breaths. I, I, I don't see fatigue setting into Jojo yet. I, I, I like what he's doing. You know, he's not loading up on punches. He's, he's really comfortable in there. He's rolling with the, the heavy shots that Perez is trying to land. Yeah, but just watch him between spots. He'll take that deep. I don't see it, Beto. Oh, Sergio, get your lace, baby. <laughs> Body shots there by Perez. You would see what, what what started that is stabbing him with a hard jab to the stop, body. Stop, that stop, kept stop, the stop, elbows stop, in of Jojo, go, 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 go. and that's what started the stop, combination stop. for Perez. Hey. And now they're getting a little rough. Jojo, Jojo, hey, Perez stop. is talking. You hooked him. Talking to Jojo. Hey, stay here. So now the respect factor is gone now. Don't retaliate. All right. You good? So I'm saying, do not retaliate. Let's go. Yeah, we don't mess around with Thomas Taylor, man. He oh. takes control of the action. And Perez is trying to take control of the action in blue and white. So is Jojo Diaz in his red and black. Jojo Diaz winging his shots now. I think that's going to benefit Perez and give him opportunities to land in between the shots. I think it serves Jojo Diaz right to keep it concise and, and, and accurate with his combination. Don't go, don't go winging your shots, giving an opportunity for Perez to land. Jojo back against the ropes. Perez attacking, Jojo slipping, nothing landed. Nothing landed, but Perez is looking good on the front foot, throwing combinations unanswered. And now he shoves Perez through the ropes. As Tom Taylor was trying to separate him, and they've both been warned. Perez went through the ropes in front of the commission. Stay there. Stay there. Time. Time has been stopped. You know if you're all right. Jojo oh, looking at the crowd, Stay telling here. them to get hyped. Come here. Yo, and a point, point has there. been deducted one from Joseph Diaz Jr. for one shoving point Ricky Perez. Tom Taylor was trying to slip it All right. Next one, we're done. All right, all right. Last one. back. Stay there. You all right? You ready to go? Stay here. All the way back. Jojo's handsy. Ready? Jojo's popping ready? up. And Tom Taylor's saying, stay back there. Why he wants to make this an even man. He wants to make this an even 9-9 run instead of a 10-8 round because of that point deduction. So 
eager to get back to work as Jojo Diaz. Get out of stay discipline. Can't be doing things like that. In a close fight, final seconds of the round. Oh man, this is a 10-8 round for Perez coming back. Now resting on his lower, still digging down and attacking Jojo Diaz. And at the bell, Tom Taylor jumped in. He jumped in right at the one second mark because somebody was throwing punches afterwards. It's getting heated here on the boy fight night. I want you to dig down to the body, both sides of the body, when he's against the ropes. This is total frustration on Jojo Diaz's part. On the back foot against the ropes, he sees Perez. You know, nothing landing cleanly, but he's still being the aggressor coming forward. And this is all frustration on Jojo Diaz right here. There was no need for him to no do need. that. No need. Tom's right there, and he shove him in the back. Yeah, that was just a, that was an immature, oh. frustrated Jojo Diaz right there. No, there's no room for that. Jojo's boxing nicely, polished, but right there, he, wrong, he stayed against the ropes a little bit too long, and Perez got confidence, you know, throwing all those shots. Wow. Nothing, nothing landed cleanly, but the momentum went to his favor. We said in the beginning, Sergio, so much on the line for Jojo. He thinks he can get back into championship contention. If he loses, this is a gatekeeper in the future. And why, why even do something stupid like that? It, it's immaturity, man. It's immaturity. Frustration? And frustration. That's exactly what it is. You know, he's, he's boxing nicely. He's throwing the right punches, but Perez is just disrespecting him and coming back with shots of his own. See, anytime, anytime Jojo gets something started, Perez comes right back, just like that. That's frustrating for a fighter like Jojo. If he can't get his punches out, and then Perez is punching in between the shots, that's where the frustration comes from. Corner of Diaz, what are they saying, Brandy? They said that Perez tried to get Jojo with a headlock there, trying to lock him in. Jojo is just showing him, like, hey, you can't do that to me. But they say that that's not going to deter him. They're still pretty confident in that corner and Jojo's abilities in getting him back on track. As Perez has a little shiner underneath his right eye here in the sixth round. That is solid left by Jojo. See, Jojo's getting back to what he does best, and that's... That's boxing, you know, using that jab, getting digging down to the body, but not smothering yourself. Getting your shots in and then getting out. He's the better boxer. He's the better boxer. He's the one with the Olympic pedigree. That's what he should go back to. You know, forget that tough guy stuff. That Perez wants you to fight like a tough guy. That's like Perez's a, fight, right? That's fight like he wants a, it dirty like that? Fight like a smart guy. Don't fight like a rugged guy. You're too, you're too smart for that if you're Jojo Diaz. Way too much pedigree for that. A minute to go in the round. Perez is doing a good job dipping and dodging and coming back with shots. Good upper body movement but Perez. Watch your head, guys. That's very active. Eight, nine unanswered punches. Nothing landed cleanly, but that those are points being piled up by Jesus Perez. He already has a 10-8 round. Good uppercut by Jojo. Three punches answered back. A good body shot there by Jojo. Yeah, from Perez. He Perez felt that one. Perez felt the body shots this round. Much better round for Joseph Diaz Jr. here in the six. Still tight in our main event, Golden Boy Fight Night in Commerce, California. Both of right them have their moments in this round. This round, you're waiting too much. Arnold Barbosa Jr., also from El Monte, undefeated, recently signed to Golden Boy. Just had a big victory.
we see him back in the ring pretty soon. Golden Boy Legend. He had a meet and greet with the fans earlier. Big crowd for him. Now you see, recognize the camera. There you go, Arnold. You gotta do some water, you gotta be hydrated, man. Yeah, 140. We're 145 yeah, divisions yeah. becoming loaded, man. I mean, a lot of talent. Arnold Barboza fits nicely into the junior welterweight division. Oh, and he'll fight anybody. All the way back. All the way back. Especially the interview I had with him after he won. He called out every name. Like, geez. Well, actually, it was for one guy. Seventh round. This is a close one. It is. Both, both fighters have had their moments, and I think, you know, whenever JoJo fights Perez's, you know, aggressive fight, that's when he gives them opportunities. JoJo should get back to sticking and moving, popping, pot shotting, just like that. Active is Perez. Effective is JoJo. Thanks to CompuBox for those punches through six rounds. Now, the judges don't have the numbers of the... The access to the numbers, Sergio, but this is one where it's going to be interesting what the judges prefer. Listen, man, they say numbers don't lie, but in boxing they do. Because <laughs> a computer can't feel pain. So a, a power jab can, can be registered as a jab, but it can hurt like a power shot. So computers don't feel pain. Good body shot there by Jojo Diaz. I've well, seen the last three fights for Perez, and... There were fights where he was competing, but he had no chance of winning. He, he was getting swept on the cards. Right now, you could tell that he has a different confidence. Like, he feels like he's winning. Oh, I mean, he may, is feel, he? Like, I don't know, he may feel like he's winning, but this is a tight fight. Yeah. But I'm saying his body language compared to when he fought Alexis was, hey, I'm hanging with a guy who's 10 pounds, 15 pounds heavier than me right now. Right now, he's being first. He's being effective. He's throwing the combinations. Yeah. And he's not respecting the former champion, right Jojo Diaz. And backing him up. Backing him up, getting the shots in. Nothing landing, like I said. Nothing penetrating clean. But look, shots like that. Those are flurry shots. It's hard to get those back whenever you're landing 10, 12 on into punches. See, JoJo landing the clean shots, but the volume is definitely on Perez's part. Could JoJo be on the ropes? He has no choice. Perez is keeping him on the ropes. Bad look for Jojo Diaz right here. Momentum goes shifting to Jesus Perez now. Right, stop, 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 oh, Jojo gets off of the ropes. Mouthy briefly pops out. Those take a toll too, right? When you're on the ropes getting hit like that, a guy leaning on you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, you're, you're, you're taught not to wrestle for the fighter, but right there, Jojo Diaz should have clinched earlier, but he, he let Perez get off with way too many shots. A grueling set of rounds. Let it go, Jojo. Let it go. I'll tell you what, Beto, I'm, I don't see the, the heavy breathing, but I can see the fatigue in the body language of Jojo Diaz. Jojo sneaks in a right hand, another right hand. A sneaky right hook there by Jojo, but Perez ate it up. Now to do it for seven. I need you to be more defensive. And this was all Jesus Perez. Jojo Diaz against the ropes, trying to trying to dodge those shots. But whenever you're getting shoe shine like that, it's hard to go off those sh all those shots, missing those shots. And judges are piling up. Look, Jojo's looking to aim and be the accurate puncher. Digging with the body shots. But some judges don't see that. Some see just the volume and see that right there. The head bouncing around. Just a bad look for Jojo Diaz, even though he did get some good shots in like that right there. Momentum shifting to Jesus Perez. Let's go. Schedule for 10. Our man of that golden boy fight night. A lot of fun. Bethel Duran, Sergio Mora, and Brandy Flores with you. Social media is popping. San Diego's rooting all for Perez. El Monte all for Jojo. Jojo needs to get a little bit of a swag back right here in this round. You know, this is a very close fight and a must win 
you know, fight for Jojo Diaz. He needs to get that jab pop and get control of the middle of the ring and look for a, a big clean shot. Don't try to hurt or knock out Perez. That, that's Watch not going to happen. Gentlemen. But you can outpoint him and use your, your pedigree, use your skill to, to get these points. What are they saying in the corner of Perez, Brandy? Well, Perez is starting to feel that pain. His corner is just hyping him up, telling him to take JoJo out, that he has the capability and to finish this fight strong like he's doing right now. Much better round for Jojo Diaz right here. You know, not letting Perez break the distance and get inside and start flurrying with shots. You know, keeping keeping Perez at the end of that jab, at the end of that range, in the middle of the ring. That's Jojo right, Diaz's stop, stop. fight for the don't next punch. couple of rounds. If you're just joining us right now, there was a 10-8 round in the fifth when Jojo threw Perez through the ropes. And that's going to, th those punches, are, that, that point deduction is going to come back to haunt Jojo Diaz by the way it's looking right now. Good body shot from JoJo. Perez answers back upstairs. He will not go anywhere, Perez, in the blue. He has his head down on JoJo's chest. If I was JoJo, I'll just keep concentrating on the body. I mean, Perez takes a big shot upstairs. upstairs. And JoJo said it when we talked to him. Perez has a big head, a big target. Yeah. I'm going to be aiming at that target, but right now he should be aiming downstairs. The bullseye should be oh. at the bread basket. That big hand got hit. With the left by Jojo, but Perez answers with a one-two. Jojo should be zeroing in on the solar plexus area. That's exactly where he should be looking at. There's a left from Jojo. Upstairs, a right from Jojo. Perez breathing heavy with 30 seconds to go in the eighth round. Jojo bringing this round back to his favor now. A much better round for the former champion, Diaz. Crowd trying to get a JoJo chant going, they do. Excellent ebb and flow by both these fighters. They both have their moments. You're throwing way too many sloppy punches. In a 12-round eliminator, the IBF WBA Lightweight World Championship. Unbeaten Camarón Cepeda takes on Maxi Hughes at the Cosmo in Vegas, Saturday, March 16th. And then on the 20th of April, Blockbuster. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Devin Haney. Ryan Garcia in Vegas? Ooh, we. You're going to be busy, Sergio. You're going to be busy. Busy's good. Busy's good, Beto. Got a good one here. Ninth round of action. Joseph Diaz Jr. And more swollen underneath the right eye of Ricky Perez. Perez is hurt to the body, man. I don't like the way he's reacting every time JoJo flinches downstairs. Look at how he covers those ribs. Yeah. Something happened in that eighth round. It was yes, it really did. good for JoJo. It was a body shot. So JoJo, I don't know if he notices it, but he should just go down to the body. Even if Perez blocks those shots, it's still going to have impact. Perez does not stop coming. Ricky, Ricky, Jojo pushes them away. Stop, now they're stop, barking stop, at each other. Ricky, you're coming in with that head, though. Keep that head up, all right? Watch the top. Man. Go. That's a tough one. Good action. Good back and forth. Neither fighter really doing anything to separate themselves. As Perez says, when you're doing honest work, you're in the sun, your body's sweating, you feel the work in your hands, and you're trying to provide a better life for your family, but oh, I only wish I knew what it was like not to have to work like that. The first time he hasn't had to 
worth the entire camp. So if I win the night, I can quit my job and focus on fighting at 135. Be a Cinderella story if Jesus Perez can do just that. And this, I mean, this fight is is, is within grasp for him to win. And it's a close down, fight. Right, stop, yep. stop, no punch, straight back. Good job. Yeah, I liked it when I saw him against Alexis Rocha. I was like, who is this little guy? Well, he was a little guy because he was in the wrong division. The accurate shots are okay, definitely okay. with Jojo Diaz, but the volume is with Perez. And Perez is looking at Tom Taylor to stop something. He's not doing it. Right, and they hug it. Up. Oh. And Jojo it's getting ugly. And Tom Taylor is looking at him. Did he shove him with an elbow? And that's what Tom's telling him. No, he hit him with a, with a shoulder. Yo, with a shoulder? A oh, shoulder bounce. Yeah, that's a old veteran move. On the opposite side of the ref. But you better be careful. You already had a point deducted. Why do something like that? I, I still think that Jojo's frustrated by, you know, Perez still being in front of him, you know, throwing all those shots in a close fight. Look, see, this is Perez's fight right there. He just punches around the guard. Nothing lands cleanly, but he's being effective. He's being busy. Right That'll do it for nine. Yeah, Tom looks over and he's like, yeah, he gave him that shoulder shove. I like that from Tom, though. Warn him without taking a point, which he could have done. No, I think the, the first one, the first point deduction did the job. He got the respect already. Yeah, you know, there's some referees that overreact. And look, this is where the frustration comes in. They're supposed to clinch, and there's that shoulder bump. You see that a lot from veterans. Yeah. But Thomas Taylor wasn't having it. No. Good, just warn him and be yeah, done with it. Start trying to move. Don't, him yeah, don't follow him. Cut in front of him and go. Glad I'm not judging this one. It's going to be a tough one to judge. And neither of them has done anything to really separate themselves where you're like, okay, he dominated that round. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just three minutes Joe remain. Martin. Here we go. Megan Duarte and Danny Martinez doing a good job with Perez's corner. Joe Rock Diaz, Nick Ariola, and the cut man extraordinaire. Go. Mike Rodriguez in the corner of Jojo. Let's go. Tenth and final round. Our main event. Watch your feet, gentlemen. Again, there was a 10-8 round in the fifth that benefited Perez. In a close fight, that's going to benefit him in the in the last round. So Perez can actually win this round. I mean, I, I, I would think that because of that point deduction, you know, the judges would have to, you know, see this fight closer than it is and maybe even sway it towards Perez. But it is a close fight, Beto. Yeah, fun fight. The former champion trying to get back into the mix and Joseph Diaz Jr. Not bad. The game, Ricky Perez. There you go, Perez finally on the back foot. Jojo doing the right thing, but coming forward, landing big shots just like that. Yes. Best shot of the night. And it was a right hook. He's throwing it with that left hand just to land that right hook. I think he finally got the respect of Perez with that shot. The best Jojo's looked all night right here in the 10th and final round. And exactly when he needed it, Beto. This is exactly what he needed to do. Halfway through the round. In a close fight, you got to pull away. You got to show that you're the one that deserves this decision. Let him go. Let's go. Is that going to be enough to win the fight? Jojo said, the discipline is on my side now. The desire is on my side. The heart, I'm only 31. I can't be wasting away my career. Get me back in at 135. He's closing like a champ. Yes, he is. He needed it, too. Jojo needed this round. He's having a big round 10. Snapping back the head of Perez. 
Yeah, now he's outclassing for yes, that. Is. On the back foot, countering off the back foot. That's really nice right there by Jojo Diaz. All right, stop, stop, no punch. Straight back. Go. And this is what champions do, man. They use their experience in close fights to pull away when the time is right and when it's needed. And Jojo Diaz definitely needed. Hey, there's levels to this, right? Jojo showing the championship level that he's been to. Exactly. Ten seconds to go. A fun fight between Diaz and Perez. Excellent fight. And they go the distance. Ten good rounds. Respect between the two. And it'll go to the judges' scorecard. Good job, good job. Good job. Undefeated super middleweight Edgar Belanga returns to the ring, taking on Irishman from Northern Ireland, Padraig McCrory in Orlando. Will Borlanga maintain his perfect record? Or will the Irishman pull off the upset? Find out live on his own February 24th. Team Diaz. Team Perez. Regardless, whatever happens for Ricky Perez, he climbed to the top tonight, and I definitely want to see that guy again. He's a fun fighter. Joseph Diaz Jr. made the weight, put on a show, and closed the show. He needed he needed this this uh, final ten round to to be in his favor and one sided after that 10-8 point deduction and such a such a tough fight to score. Yeah, the 10-8 round. Will that come into play? Jojo holding his baby boy Zenith. Well, it's what's all about respect between the two fighters. But those are the judges' scorecards. A fun fight. Good back and forth. Crowd here at Commerce Casino got their money's worth. Joe, face clean. There it is, sharing that moment with his young son. The drama is done. We have a decision. Joe Martinez climbing into the ring and will let us know how the judges scored this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 explosive rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. One more time, comments for these two warriors. Put your hands together up there. Here are the scoring totals. Tiffany Clinton scores it 96-94. Benes. Zach Young, 95-94 for Diaz. And Dr. Lou Moret scores it 99-90 for your winner by split decision. From Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Jesus Ricky. Ninety six ninety four Pettis. Ninety five ninety four Diaz. Those are affected by the point deduction. The ninety nine ninety. I am sorry. That is terrible, Sergio Mora. That is. That, that, that's that, not fair to either fighter. That, that is disgusting. It's what it is. Ninety nine ninety. I can totally understand this fight going to Perez, going to Diaz. Either way, even a draw. But that was a one sided fight. Ninety nine ninety. Come on. That's ridiculous. I thought Joe Martinez was going to give us a draw. And I wouldn't be upset at a draw. And I wouldn't be upset if Perez won or if Diaz won. But 99-90, ah. 
Diaz had no chance. It's look, ridiculous. Look, I'm not one to get on judges. It's a hard thing to do with referees. But 99-90, I'm sorry, that is not fair to either Joseph Diaz Jr. or Jesus Perez, who put on an excellent show for us tonight. Let's look at the highlights for Jesus Perez, who gets a huge victory, his 25th of his career. And a well-deserved victory. Credit to Jesus Perez. But this was not a 99-90 type performance. Both men had their ebb and flow of landing shots. Perez had his, that point deduction. That was a big no-no on Jojo Diaz, but it, but it didn't matter if it was going to be 99-90. I mean, this was an excellent slugfest, as expected. Both, both men landed their shots, both of them to the body, both of them to the head. A great ebb and flow of violence. Look at this. This is what the crowd saw. This is what the crowd expected. That's what they're cheering. That was a fun fight, and they were going back and forth. Beautiful fight, beautiful slugfest. It, it was. was. Tight, tight fight, close fight. I wouldn't have been mad at a draw, but ridiculous one scorecard. Jesus Perez came in the huge underdog. He was a plus 450 when I saw this morning, and he gets the victory. He's standing by with Brandy Flores. Ricky, you wanted to make a statement when you knew that this was going to be a tough challenge to come out victorious. How does this feel? ¿Cómo te sientes si quieres hacer un, un, un statement de esta pelea de mostrar a quién era? ¿Cómo te sientes? Ah, me siento bien. Ah, gracias a Dios. El trabajo se miró. Como todo peleador tenemos dificultades, errores, pero supimos sacar la mano en alto y sacar la pelea. Y respeto a mi peleador que es un guerrero. He felt really good. The job was harder than he thought. The job was hard. He respects his opponent, and it, the hard work paid off right here. Split decision. Did you think it was that close of a fight? Pensaba que estaba así de cerrada. I pensé que yo pensé como era el favorito le iban a la pelea, pero nunca dejamos nuestro sueño para poderle dar la victoria a mi querida gente y a mi querida familia. He felt like it was going to be. He knew it was really close, but he was not going to get the decision because he's not the favorite. Or the, and, but he just worked the hard. He thanks God and thanks the promotion everybody for the opportunity to give him a fair decision. And you said that this was going to help you launch your career. You've been waiting for an opportunity like this. What does this mean to seize this moment and what's next for you? You said that this was the moment that you were waiting for to demonstrate who you were and the opportunity that you were going to get this How do you feel? Me siento muy bien, sabía que era un peleador duro, sabía que la pelea iba a ser dura y sabíamos que teníamos que dar el extra. Uh, nos levantamos todos los días a las 4 de la mañana para correr, para llegar a la casa a las 4.30, estar con mi familia, comer algo, irme a trabajar a las 6 y media, llegar a las 7 a trabajar, salir a las 3 y media, de ahí ir a entrenar a las 4 y media, salir a las 6 y media, llegar a las 7 y media a la casa y estar un rato con mi familia. Siento que todo eso ha valido la pena. Dios miró todo lo que hicimos y gracias a toda esta gente. That's, that's going to be hard to repeat. He said basically all the hard work that he did, waking up at 3.30 in the morning, go to train hard work, go to work all day, work an eight, 10 hour shift, go to the gym, then head back home and enjoy an hour or two with his daughters. This is what, this is the fruits of his labor. Congratulations, Ricky. Thank you. Here with Jojo Diaz. Jojo, first off, not the decision that you wanted, not in your favor. What did you think of the way that this was scored? And obviously, you coming out on the losing end of the split decision. I mean, I thought I only lost one round, the uh, point deduction round. I won the fight. I mean, this is uh, this is getting unfair now, man, with my career. I trained so fucking hard, man, for all my fans. Thank you, guys. Thank you, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love you so much. At the end of the day, man, these guys are going to try to rip me off and try to do all these politics type of shit, man. But at the end of the day, dude, that, that's, that's bullshit. Everybody knows I won the fight. And with that point detection, what happened there? It looked like you just threw him out of the ring. Well, yeah, I just I didn't throw him out of the ring. He was uh, we were in position wrong, and I shoved him, and he overdid. He, I guess now he's an actor. So, Jojo, you talked before about the climb back to becoming a world champion once again. Do you think this is a setback for you at all? Uh, I, I don't think it's a setback. I just got to see what the Golden Boy Promotions, my managers, if they ain't gonna give me no more fair, fair shakes, then. I might just wait until my, my, my contract's up and I could go get, go somewhere else where someone, uh, where they deserve and where they, where they respect me, man, because I did everything that I needed to do with this camp, man. I trained hard, I, I, I fought and won every single round, and for them to come and do this like this is bullshit.
Jojo, you have that confidence that seems to not falter. Where do you go from here mentally? I know it just happened. Um, just mentally, I mean, like I said, man, I'm, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus now, man. None of this shit's gonna affect me anymore. All right, Jojo, thank you. Back to you guys inside. Obviously a very uh, frustrated Joseph Diaz Jr. We apologize for the language, but you understand why. Uh, Sergio, we'll start with uh, Jojo here. You know, the numbers that he had on the compu box were on his side. You know, Jojo, if you look at the numbers, was more effective with his punches. As uh, Jesus Perez threw a lot, but he wasn't landing a lot. And you saw Jojo with the effectiveness tonight. You see Jojo landing 40% in the final punch stats uh, compared to Perez, who had 21. The total punches thrown, well, Perez almost doubled them as he was throwing a lot. We saw that, but he wasn't landing a lot. He was Jojo was the effective fighter tonight. So it depends on how you want to score it and where which way you're going to go. And, you know, we don't score here ringside. We're commenting. We hear people talking in our ears. But you know what you saw, and it wasn't as wide as one of the judges would have, Sergio. No, it wasn't that wide. I mean, I, I, could, I could understand a draw. I could see one... One judge seen it for uh, Diaz, one seen it for Perez. I'm not going to hate on that, but look, yeah. what what did they see for a one-sided yeah. fight? That was not a one-sided fight that one judge had it. But look, credit to Perez. Yeah. Perez came here confident, in shape, and he just beat a former champion. I'm not hating yeah. on Perez. And as a matter of fact, I think he might have pulled this one out. A draw was more in my favor, but look, all credit to Jesus Perez for what he just did, because that's a hard-working man, came from Tijuana. He's a part-time fighter, and he just beat a former champion, Jojo Diaz. As frustrated as Jojo Diaz is, he has no one to blame but himself in this one. Yeah, credit to Perez, who will go back to work on Monday. Bricklayer in San Diego, go back to the arena gym. His life could be changing pretty soon. So without a doubt, Perez is not the golden boy fighter. Perez is not the one that was on the marquee, not the, the one that brought the people, but he did the job and got the victory. For Joseph Diaz Jr., though, you know, he said that he wanted to get back into championship contention. He looked good. He trained right. He ate right, made weight. Get him down to 135. This guy, I'm not going to say he's a championship contender still, but he can, if he's locked in and focused, he can still fight somebody who's on that climb. Maybe a uh, kid Austin, Floyd Schofield, somewhere along those lines. I think he's, he could still fight Floyd Schofield. That's still an entertaining fight. I mean, I mean, we're still dealing with a fighter that's not been overwhelmed. And, and Jojo Diaz, he's, he's lost, but he's never been stopped or knocked out. And he's lo only lost the absolute best. This is the only one on his resume that's not going to age well, you know, with, with Perez. But, you know, he's obviously very frustrated and the things that came out of his mouth there are not what he should have said i think he's gonna look back he's gonna he's gonna probably want another chance and get back in there stay active but back to the championship level i don't think we're gonna see that anymore beto well, we're hoping we both know jojo really well considering him a friend we're like you know jojo is smart doesn't let this affect him well, obviously it will but doesn't let it too much because Get back to the gym as soon as you can. Don't let the outside distractions get to you because he's only 31 years old. So he can, you never know in the sport of boxing how things can, once you clean up your act and you go out there and you make some noise. Man, it's still a fun fight night working with you, man. This is good. Ya sabes, mijo. We got no, some good work. We Come got on. it. Come on now. Up, <laughs> <laughs> For everybody behind the scenes, great job. Everybody in the production truck, everybody on the crew. For Oscar DeLoya, Eric Gomez, President Golden Boy, and everybody that just made this happen so easy, so smooth tonight. That's a wrap for Golden Boy Fight Night for Brandy Flores, my partner extraordinaire, Sergio Mora, and the rest of our crew. I'm Beth Duran saying good night from L.A. On worldwide May 18th, the fight of the century: Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division, but Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire live on the Zone Worldwide May 18th.